Okay, let me ask, let me send it to you. I'll send it to you right now. That was Bert. He's having trouble getting in and just. You know, Frank, we, yeah. had to, we had to cancel our uh, in-progress working group meeting yesterday. Uh, I guess it was yesterday. Because all of a sudden, everybody got kicked off, or half the people, and couldn't get back on. Wow. So I'm hoping we don't ever have that issue with us. Okay. You know? I welcome everyone to the February meeting of the Business Licenses Manhattan Community Board for uh, pursuant to the governor's order, uh, we are allowed to meet uh, in this format uh, during the state of emergency. Uh, one of the conditions of that is that these meetings are recorded. Uh, the recording is posted on YouTube and it's also being streamed live on YouTube uh, right now. So uh, please bear that in mind uh, in the discussion and uh, comments uh, you may have. Uh, if any, in case anyone here is new, uh, this committee hears applications for liquor licenses and sidewalk cafes. We then make recommendations to the full community board four, which will take its own vote on these matters on March three. Uh, anyone who wants to speak to the full board can do so. Uh, you're limited to a, a two minute uh, speaking session at the full board. The full board will then make a recommendation to the state liquor authority about whether to grant or deny a license. I want to stress that we do not have any power to grant or deny liquor licenses. And anyone who is uh, happy or unhappy with what happens here tonight or at the full board can also make their views known directly to the state uh, liquor authority uh, when they consider these matters. Uh, we will call each agenda item in order, uh, starting with the beer, wine, and cider applications. Uh, we will ask the applicant to present first uh, what they're seeking. We'll take uh, comments and questions from the committee and then take any questions from the public. Uh, this is set up as a Zoom webinar. So the only people you're seeing on screen are the committee members and the applicants. Uh, if anyone in the community wants to speak, uh, when we get to uh, the item you wanna speak about, please either use the raise hand function or uh, send uh, a message in the chat saying that you'd like to speak and that you will then be moved into the main meeting. Uh, with that, I think we can begin with uh, agenda. Uh, and just so everyone has knows about the current agenda, uh, item seven has been withdrawn. That is 102 8th Avenue. Uh, that will not be heard tonight, or I, I think it's completely withdrawn, will not be heard ever. And then there was a, uh, uh, an item 10 had gotten left off some of the earlier agendas that will be heard tonight, uh, 373 West 46th Street. Uh, with that, we can begin with uh, 311 West 17th Street, Kiwami, Inc. Uh, I'm, I'm Alan Gardner. I'm the attorney for the applicant. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, I believe uh, present uh, are uh, Mr. Naoki Takashigi, who was the principal owner. And uh, I saw the name, uh, uh, I, I don't see him on the screen, uh, Junpei Sakai, who will be a, uh, a principal manager of the restaurant. Uh, okay. This is going to be a, a small Japanese restaurant. Uh, there previously was a uh, Jack, just one second, uh, Alan. Nellie, is that other person in the uh, attendees? What's what's his name? What's your client's other name? Sakai, uh, Junpei Sakai. Sakai. Uh, I I I believe he was he was sent a uh, a link to to uh, uh, to be able to uh, uh, speak at that meeting. Mommy. I, Mommy. I I thought I saw his name as being entered. Uh, Natsukai, <laughs> Nat, Natsukai Samuel? No, Junpei Sakai, S-A-K-A-I. 
S A K A I. I don't see him in the participant in the attendee list. Oh, hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yes, I am on the screen. Okay. Welcome. Right. There are, we have so many people. There are two screens. There's a one and a two. Oh, okay. Okay, Alan, go ahead. Uh, th this is uh, this is going to be a uh, a Japanese restaurant. The the uh, the premises were previously licensed uh, as a Japanese restaurant, Naoki. Uh, Mr. Sakai is uh, will will uh, describe the the uh, uh, the restaurant a little little bit better, and we're available for any any questions. Okay, Mr. Sakai. Mr. Sakai. Okay, so they, let me explain about your business. So. So uh, the, we are uh, the Japanese restaurant. It's a Wagyu specialized high-end Japanese restaurant. And we are assuming our price point is somewhere around 150 to 180 range. Mostly we will offer the Wagyu related items such as Wagyu sushi or Wagyu steaks, Wagyu sukiyaki as well as high-end sake. Okay. Uh, Alan, a couple of questions about the uh, stipulation form you filled out. Um, do you have it in front of you? Yes, I do. Okay, on page two, um, when you put the numbers, the capacity, uh, you have a capacity of your CFO at 88 people but then the maximum number of people at 100, which can't be, you can't be above your C of O. So I think one of those numbers is wrong. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of that and we're, we're, we're working it out. I don't have an answer quite yet, but it'll, it'll be one or, one or the other. Okay, can you let we us know? To, uh, we, may have to re, we may have to reduce the, uh, the capacity to 74. Okay, can you let us know, uh, Nelly, what, what date do you want for additional materials? Uh, let me take a look at the calendar. Give me one second. Okay. Uh, the uh, full board should be the, th the third. Yes. The same uh, way it was in February. Right. Alan, um, sorry, what date? The, tw the 22nd. 22nd. Okay, can you get us the, uh, that information by the 22nd? Yes. Okay. Uh, the, my next question may be that similarly, uh, you may have to similarly wait on, on page three, you didn't answer whether public assembly permit is required. Well, that's a, a, I guess that's that'll a, depend on whether you need to reduce to 74 or not, right? Yeah. Is that yes. when you get the capacity yeah. straight yeah, up? We'll, we'll get you an answer to both. Okay, great. Um, on page four, uh, I don't think you answered the question about whether you're going to use a storm enclosure, which are those uh, plastic booths that go around the uh, outside of the door in winter. I, 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 I don't think we are. This is in the basement, and I, I, I don't think we'll need it, but I'll, I'll confirm that one way or the other. Okay. Uh, and then the last thing, um, a little further down on that, when you said, will applicant have any of the following? French doors, garage doors, windows that can be opened. You have none of those? Uh, no, it's all in, all in the, the, the basement level. Okay. All right, uh, Bert, that's all I have. I'm fine. Are there any questions from uh, committee members? Uh, is the applicant- Wait, sure? wait, is that Brian? And then in Inga. Yeah, is the applicant sure about the 10 p.m.? Closing, um, especially on weekends. I think the board would probably be amicable to even an hour later on weekends. Uh, we, At least we, would be. we may take advantage of that. We we thought that uh, I when I filled this out, I thought that ten o'clock was ample, but we could, if if that's all right, we can add an hour to it. Yes, because um, the the closing hours on our forms are the uh, times that the restaurant has to be vacated of all patrons. Uh, we're not talking about that time as taking your last order. It's the time when nobody is there except the employees cleaning up. 
Well, I, I, with, without discussing this with, with my client, I would like to take advantage of that and, and add, add, add an hour or two to the, to the closing hour. Okay. If, do you want to go to- If midnight won't be a problem. Do you want to go to midnight to be safe? Yes. On and the you weekend. Don't, you don't have to stay open. Of course. That night. But it gives you the leeway. Yes. Okay, Inga? I was gonna, thank you, Brian. Um, so the weekend would be Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Well, I think it would be midnight every night, if that's all right. I, I think the weekend is Thursday, Friday, Saturday for us. That's what we typically give longer hours for. So I just wanted to clarify that 10 o'clock Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 12 p.m. or a.m. And um, I just noticed on the application, you've been in that space or they've been in that space since September. So they started during COVID with no alcohol, is that correct? No, that, no that this, was, this was intended to show the, the, um, uh, the, the, the prior, uh, the, the, the other restaurant owned by the same people. And, um, and, and they, they, they started operations there without, without, without liquor. Without liquor. Okay, so you've had experience. Okay. Christine. Uh, just to clarify one thing, I think the applicant is now asking to be open until midnight every night, correct? That's what I think so too. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know about that to start with. Well, that's very small. Let me just. What did you say, Christine? I'm just saying this is what we do usually 11 on side street, right? This is what we like to do. So why don't we give them 11 across the board on, uh, on, the, side, on, on the side street, right? I would be fine with, I mean, midnight on the weekends, but. I'm good with midnight, uh, those three weekend nights and the rest of the week 11. So this is not really. Same here. This is not really mid-block. Uh, I think I know this space, mm -hmm. 311, 311. It's really just a little bit in from the corner. Right. But how does that sound to the applicant? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, midnight, and the other days of the week, 11. I, I think that will be fine. OK. OK. Is that good with the? Uh, because I twee, I saw you shaking your head before no. So is it OK with? I mean, I, I have to. Excuse me, sorry. I have to defer to the more seasoned members here because I'm looking at the street and it's above residential. I mean, there's three floors of residential above it and it looks like to the left and right of it. And I'm just surprised where, you know, latitude is given, but you know, if that's the way it's been. I think this space has for years been some kind of restaurant, years going back at least 20 years. Mm -hmm. And has it been to those hours, those years? I think that I don't, I can't, I can't say yes or no. I know I've eaten there late <laughs> in my youth. I can't confirm what the, what the previous hours were. It was 11 p.m. across, the, it was 11 p.m. across the board. Uh, and the most recent one. Yeah. Okay. So not significantly different from what we're doing here. Okay. Thanks for catching that, Bert. <laughs> well, it's very obvious when your head goes like this. <laughs> so, um, Anybody else? Oh, Christine, go ahead. Okay, um, back to, uh, can, can we just uh, uh, stipulate that if there is an enclosure, it will be limited to 18 inches, so we don't have to... So because if they come back and say, yes, we're going to do an enclosure, then we have to go back to them and say, okay. It's Talking fine. about a winter uh, entrance way. Right, right. Is the applicant okay with that? If you do have a storm enclosure, it can only be 18 inches from the building facade? Well, I mean, it's the law, right? Right, I was just I, making right. clear what, what to... So well, will, you, will you agree to a stipulation like well, that? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll make sure that it, I, I, I was under the impression that it was, it was not going to be a storm enclosure, but if, if there is, we will we will limit it to take it. Okay. okay, thank you. Good. Anybody, any other committee person? Anybody from the public do we have? 
Nellie wants to speak on this issue. Uh, I had I had something though. Oh, Pui, I'm sorry. I see your hand is up. Okay. <laughs> um, I saw in the plans that there's a courtyard, and it says written in, and it says garden. Is that going to be operable? And no, no. Uh, that 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 the, there is a physical courtyard there. It will, it will it will not be used. There will be no outs, outdoor or outside uh, uh, operation. Yeah. So I guess we just need to make sure that the, uh, the the staff doesn't use it and the door doesn't stay open, right? If if it is on the same level, I, I'm not visualizing. Oh. Is this Al the Alan, do you have any act? Does your client have any access to the outdoor area? Um, uh, Mr. Sakai, do you do you know if we or or, or if if we have access to the, to the courtyard area? Yes, we do have an access door to the courtyard right. from the dining area. There's a one door open. So, and do you do you plan to use it at all? Uh, no, the guard the courtyard is. Just as a part of you know the display decoration, so we are not gonna use for the seating purpose. It's a decorative rock formation garden. Yes, the, what it is. I think Rocks and Japanese garden. So I think the point we're making is that it, it you, you need to make sure that uh, the door keeps is kept closed all the time. And that your staff doesn't yes. go out, you know, as they are emptying the the because otherwise that would have an impact on the neighbor. Right. Okay, so Alan, we're gonna add a stipulation if you're okay with it. Outdoor courtyard will not be used by staff and patrons at any time. Door to courtyard will be kept closed at all times. Mr. Sakai, is that is that accurate? Is that okay? Yes, totally okay. No use by this staff. Okay. Okay. Uh, anybody from the public, Nelly? Do you have down who wants to speak? No, no one. Okay. Uh, I'd, I'd like to make a motion. Second. All those in favor, just raise a hand. Aye. I want to say a voice. Okay. Uh, against. Abstaining. Present not eligible. Twee, you're abstaining? Yes. Okay. It passed. I was away from the desk. I. Okay, thanks, Mike. Okay, good luck, guys. Thank you. Thank you. The next also is a wine, beer, and cider application, 739 9th Avenue, store number two, Omakasi by Korami. And is the applicant here, the lawyer? Yes, uh, my name is Sam Park. I'm the representative, the Omakasa by Kurami. And then the owner of the Michang is the, on the online right now. Okay, so tell us about what you want. Okay, uh, we are applying for the wine and cider in the for liquor license. And then we are open for up, hour of operation is 12 p.m. to 11 p.m. seven days. And the maximum occupancy is 26, two table, four seat, one sushi bar for eight seat. <clears throat> and we are still in the renovation right now. So we'll be open up the end of April or consider the depending the construction be open we are thinking about the May right now. Okay. And there'll be only including the owners and then two more employee, one more sushi chef and then server. So total three employees there. Okay. Uh, Sam, I have a couple of questions about the application. Mm -hmm. On page four, uh, you didn't answer the question about whether the entrance is ADA compliant. Do you know if it is or isn't? The page four, right? 
Yeah, page four, the uh, fifth question down, is the entrance ADA compliant? Uh, while he looks for that, uh, yeah, uh, I'm sorry. You, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Do you know if it's ADA compliant, or do you need to get that information to us later? Yes, I'm going to get the information for later. Okay, and then Nelly said, "Remember, is the 22nd." Yeah, so by February 22nd. Sure. And then further down, where it says, "Will the establishment have any of the following French doors, garage doors, windows that open?" Do you have no. any of this? There's no, not at all. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, we have a, an email from the uh, HK 50, 4954 Block Alliance from Steve Bolita, the chair, uh, who says, this space is a small party room area formerly used by Mario's Pizza. Um, we don't see any issues with this application or their operating times. They have the support of the community. We only ask that they keep all doors closed if amplified music is playing, which they've agreed to. Yeah, we will be um, uh, playing music, only background music, that at all. Yes. Okay. Any questions from the uh, committee? Anybody from the public, Nelly? No. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Third. Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Wait, we, have, we haven't Thanks. finished the vote yet. <laughs> Opposed? Abstaining? President not eligible. Okay, good Thank luck. you. Thank you very much. Okay, we're moving now into another grouping of applications. This is the alteration in class change. We're starting with 164 Ninth Avenue. This is our number three on the agenda, milk and hops. They're asking for a change in their liquor license from wine, beer, to include hard liquor, an on-premise license. On license. Uh, and just, just to remind everyone why we're here, uh, we voted to approve this uh, last month, recommend approval last month with certain stipulations. Uh, we then started hearing that there were community concerns um, that were coming up. And rather than try to deal with all of that at full board, we asked the applicant to return tonight to discuss them with us first. Um, so that's really what this is about, the, uh, you know, the issues raised uh, by the community uh, with this operator. Um, I have uh, some written emails, five in favor and four opposed, but I'll only summarize those after we hear from the public in case any of those people are here live and want to speak live. Does the applicant first want to say anything? Uh, uh, Michael Kelly representing the applicant. I could go through the application again, or we can wait and see what people have to say. I think it'd probably be more effective if we wait to see what people have to say. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Um, anybody from the committee want to make a statement or say anything? Inga. And then Carrie. Mute myself. That would work better. Um, I did vote against this the last time it came up. I live in the neighborhood. I live right around the corner. I walk by frequently. I know that they occasionally are noisy. And during the COVID little house that they had built, they were serving people standing only uh, alcohol, no seating. Um, I also did not see in the, I am opposed to this application for an unlicensed space. 
Um, I don't think we need another license space, and I am not sure whether or not the 500 foot rule comes into effect here because there are a number of liquor establishments surrounding it. Um, Their application says it, that it does, Inga. Yeah, so I, I personally, as a neighbor and a resident, do not think it's in the community's best interest to add another licensed liquor establishment, particularly in a non-licensed, previously non-licensed space. I did look through all of the letters that came in. I have another one from someone. I'm not sure if he's here. If he is not here, I'd like to read his email. I believe he sent it to Nelly, but not sure. Um, his name is Larry Goldblatt, so I don't know if he's not here. I will read his letter on his behalf and I can send it to you guys as well, if you don't have it. Uh, I, just want to, I, want I to don't say. think they're good neighbors. Okay. I want to say what Inga is referencing to remind everyone, it's not only just a change in liquor license type, it's also this, this, this establishment was a little bit to the north of the corner, and at the corner was a gelato shop. The gelato shop no longer exists, and they're moving into, they want to also move into that space. So we, we okay. would not want another licensed liquor space. We'd rather have something unlicensed and it is in a residential building. Um, and we don't want that large of a, an alcoholic space to be there. We just don't think it's right for the neighborhood. It's too yeah. much. Yes, um, I, I had some of the same reservations last time um, with the size of the establishment that it's going to be, you know, take up about half of the block. Um, and today I received uh, just a, the email newsletter from the West 20th Block Association and there was a lot of conversation. I'm not sure if there's anyone who's here representing um, the association, but it was not a favorable email um, from many of the residents who live above or nearby. So I just thought I should um, point that out. Okay. Uh, yeah, not a good neighbor. Not good neighbors was the, the gist. Hey, this is Rob. I'd like to add something. I also live in the neighborhood. I think they're great. Um, they're not taking over half, even a quarter of the block. What they're doing is um, there is the space within that building. They're acquiring the old gelato space, which would be the, that corner unit. So they're simply expanding. Um, I think it would be a great move for them to have a liquor license. Personally, I think it would be welcomed. We recently uh, authorized other full license liquor places in places that never even had liquor license is before going back to the fall as recently in the area. Um, I, I think they're a good neighbor and I would love to see them have this. Um, I don't see any issue with it, but I'm very open to hear others in the community and their opinions as well. So that's my take on that. Thank you. <clears throat> this is, I just want to make a, a statement. It's like reading, having read all the emails that we've gotten so far, for, against, and just hearing what Inga, you've just said, and what Rob has just said, and Kerry, it's like one person says they're a really terrible neighbor. One person says they're a really great neighbor. One person says to us, they're really noisy. I made a complaint, and they did not do anything about it. We get another letter that says, I, they were noisy, we made a complaint, and they completely took care of it. It's like, I, hearing both, I said this to Frank when we had a little discussion, it's like the elephant, and one person is describing the ear, and another person is describing the trunk. Where is the reality in this? And I think that's something we have to find out here. I mean, uh, if I could say something, we did notify the 20th Street Block Association on 1026 about our application. And we also notified them on January 7th. We had no response from them. So okay, I don't that's know a how fact. bad of a neighbor we could be Whatever. to get no response. 
Okay. Uh, anybody else from the committee? Yeah, let me just I have a, a tactical question. So what can you remind me what the capacity increase would be by moving into the new space? Because I think uh, I, Bert, I had the same feeling reading the letters. It's like, it's just flip flop, right? Like everybody has just their own experience. Um, but when we're talking about, aside from the issue of a new space being licensed, essentially what we're talking about is this, you know, for people who are against this application, this fear of an expansion. So I'm wondering how many more people potentially could be fit into the space since it sounds like uh, noise has been an issue. Um, so that's uh, Good question. Right now, our occupancy would be 24 tables. Well, we'd have 46 seats altogether and eight at the bar for a total occupancy of 54. It appeared to me, the last application that was done, which I didn't do, that they had an occupancy of 32. Now, the store we're taking over on the corner would not have French stores like the rest of the premise does. So we're basically going up 22 people. I think 54 seats in a restaurant would still be a small restaurant in comparison to a lot of places around us. Okay, so just to clarify, net new, 22 people. Yes. 22 seats, essentially. Yes. Okay. Okay, I see. Uh, Kerry, do you want to say something again? Because also yeah. Brian had a question in the chat. Oh, super quick. I just, um, in the email, it mentioned that there were numerous 311 calls. So I just wanted to ask Nellie if there were 311 calls. I guess I'm sorry, can you repeat that again? Were there any 311 calls uh, mm -hmm. about this establishment? We got, uh, we did not get notified about them. We, oh, we, oh, sorry. I thought we did. I thought we no, had we would have to research uh, them. Our, our community see. member sent us a list though of about a hundred or two calls uh, that she made starting in 2018 with, with, the, with the numbers and everything and the dates. So this Can certainly I, were, were a lot from at least one person. Can um, I tell you what I found? If, yes, go ahead. Uh, prior to Travis taking over, which was when COVID started, we found 32, 23 were unfounded, nine were founded. That's when we had the old manager. Since Travis was there, they found well, we found six complaints. Four of them, there was no evidence or action taken by the police. The other two were for loud talking. We don't know if that was our people or somebody else, but I talked to Travis about that. He said he's been keeping the people quiet that are in the outside seating. He also stopped the uh, standing that was going on and tables and chairs were installed. So under Travis, Travis did say he did get one call from a neighbor the night uh, Joe Biden was basically won the election. And, you know, he took care of that right away. That might be the neighbor you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just one more thing. When, just one more thing. Last week, I, I walked by almost every day, but I went out later at night to see what was going on. This was after um, our last meeting and they were aware of not serving people standing. There was one gentleman with a bar stool and a large stein of beer sitting on the sidewalk in front of the gelato shop. Not in the enclosed area, not in the restaurant, on the sidewalk. I have a photograph of him sitting there with his very large beer out in the open drinking a beer. Okay. Frank, uh, you Bert, uh, yeah. Asked what the Bert, stipulations were? Yeah, Brian asked. Brian, these were the steps they agreed to last time. There will be no sandwich boards, A frame signs, or other obstructions placed on the sidewalk. Applicant will keep an eight foot pedestrian clear path at all times. There will be no roadway or sidewalk seating on West 20th Street. In open restaurant sidewalk seating, all patrons must be seated in compliance with NYC and NYS guidelines. No standing patrons permitted. Yeah, I would like to hear what the public has to say. Um, You're sure that that was a patron <laughs> with their own stein? <laughs> Brian, I agree with you, but I also, Christine had her hand raised, and then we'll see what the public has to say. Christine. 
You're muted. I know. Uh, I just wanted to get to the public. Well, so you agree with Brian. Okay. <laughs> um, unless there's anyone else from the committee, can we, how many people have signed up, Nellie? Can we? There's only one person with their hand raised. Say what? Only one person with their hand raised. Only one person, okay. Okay, hold two. on one second. Oh, now two, hold on one second. The first person is Liz. Hi, this is actually Liz's husband, Stephen. We live okay. at West 21st Street. We are fully in favor of their application. Uh, in my experience, they've been a model neighbor. They've been a great neighbor. Um, they close at a reasonable hour. They are nice people who just want to hang out and drink beer. If that isn't the kind of place that you want in New York that makes New York, New York, I don't get it. You know, the lottery closed because these businesses are suffering. They're having a hard time. And if they think this is in their best interest financially, I fully support it. They're a great company, a great place for them to go, a, a great establishment. And I hope that it's approved. I see the rest of my time, if that's what we're ready for. <laughs> okay, next I have is Joshua. Give me one second. Joshua. Hi, this is Joshua's wife. Uh, my name is Lori and um, we live on the block. I can actually see um, their out outdoor seating um, from my bedroom window, just to give you an idea of how close we are. And um, I'm in complete agreement with the previous speaker that we are in support of this. Um, and uh, Nellie, we actually sent you a letter to this effect earlier today. Um, I, like I said, my, my bedroom window um, looks out onto there. <laughs> uh, I'm not directly above, but across the street. And we have had no issues with noise. Um, we are out on the street and walking our dog past them all the time. We have had no issues. We've, we haven't seen anything that causes us any concern. Um, I actually stopped by this weekend and spoke with Travis. And I think a point that's worth mentioning is that um, Travis did is a new manager that took over um, pre-COVID. And I think that it's important to consider um, his impact since COVID started. Um, my conversation with him was very positive and productive. I sensed that I brought up some of the issues that were raised, I think, in the, the newsletter that you mentioned earlier, which which. I am not in support of the messaging in that newsletter. I think it was very antagonistic. Several of us who are on that newsletter actually wrote in and mentioned that we needed to present a proper view um, rather than rile up the, the neighborhood and encouraged um, the people in that, in, who are receiving that newsletter to, to make decisions on their own and find out the facts of what's going on. Um, when I spoke with Travis, I, I brought up some of the issues that I had heard. He sounded to me like someone who was very vested in working with this community. And um, to the point of the, the previous speaker, this is a neighborhood establishment. Um, the people who are, who are going to this bar are people like me in the neighborhood. It's exactly the type of place that I would want to have here versus boarded up shops um, or just drug stores and banks, which is not the fabric of the community that I choose to live in. Do we see anybody else, Nellie? Yes, Lucy. Lucy? Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. <clears throat> um, yes, I, I live in at 365 um, West 20th. And I, I sent um, to uh, I sent a memo to Nellie describing my concerns about <clears throat> Milk and Hops and the fact that I do not think that they are a good neighbor. Um, my personal feeling is that they have they have displayed um, disrespect to the neighborhood. And I will tell you one particular instance in that <clears throat> they had a um, delivery truck of theirs delivering some of their beer well, um, destroyed one of the street trees, um, knocked it in half. And um, one of my neighbors inquired as to when they would replace it and was told in no uncertain terms that it was none of her business, that um, they were not going to replace it. 
Since then, they have built the dining shed over the tree bed um, in the neighborhood. So I find that being not necessarily neighborly. The other thing I want to mention is that many of these noise complaints, and there, as was mentioned earlier, there are well over 100 311 calls about the noise. The noise is on the inside of that comes up through the, the building itself. It's not the noise on the, on the sidewalk coming out from the diners on the outside so much, but the residents above the restaurant are literally suffering because it comes up through the floor and up through the piping. And several of the residents have very had gone down in person, talked to the managers and, and basically been um, rebuffed and said, you know, not your, not your problem. So I feel it's very important that everybody be aware that the people that live above this establishment have real, real concerns about it because it's really impacted their quality of life. Lucy, can I ask, do you, uh, are you one of these people directly affected? Do you, do you hear noise from them or you've just I heard do not. Them? I will tell you, I do not because I live on the 20th street side of the building. I don't live on the 9th Avenue side over, okay. the, over the restaurant. Okay, but thanks. I've had a number of, of my neighbors in the building telling me about this for years. Okay, that was my other question. Um, we've heard there's been this new uh, manager, um, you know, during the, since during the COVID time. Do you, has there been any fall off in, in complaints that you've heard or, or the, in other words, are the complaints all about pre uh, 2019 and earlier or have they continued? No, they've continued. The most recent one was Thanksgiving. Okay. Um, and that had to do not only with noise, but with the actual operating hours. They stayed later than, than when they were supposed to close. Okay. That is documented in a couple of things that were sent to the committee. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for my time. Christine, why don't we finish with the public and then we'll circle back. Next, I have Caroline. Caroline? Yes, hi. Um, I apologize uh, if my letter, uh, which was published in the 300 block newsletter, riled people up. It wasn't that, it wasn't intended to do that. Um, above Milk and Hops, and I really thought I could tolerate the noise. Um, uh, I called the bar repeatedly at 11.20 p.m. Uh, after closing in 2016, asked them to turn the volume of the music down and they did not. Yeah. I thought I could live with it. Um, you know, it's coming up through the walls and the, and the floors. It's um, loud pounding in surround sound. It was 14 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, I don't like conflict with my neighbors. I'm a very quiet person. Um, and retired and home a lot. Um, I, uh, in 2017, I spoke to the manager uh, or the owner, Rick White, um, and uh, he said he would get back to me. Um, I asked him to put in soundproofing and to move the uh, speakers from the sound system away from the ceiling. He said he could not move the speakers because of the wiring. He would try to muffle the sound and uh, he would get back to me and tell me what he was going to do. Uh, that was on March 28th, 2017. I waited a few weeks. I, I rarely file 311 complaints. Um, I gave him a month or so and it got louder and louder. So I did start to call 311 uh, later in the year. You have my list of 311 calls. Now with 311, of course, Complaints are usually unfounded. If I call at midnight, they have eight hours to respond. If they get there at 8 a.m., <laughs> they're not going to find anything on the street <laughs> except the garbage collector, maybe. The bar would be closed. Nothing would be going on. It would be quite quiet. Um, nonetheless, um, I would call the bar first and ask them to turn the volume down. Um, I got responses that were you know, grunts, sarcasm. Uh, sometimes they'd say no problem and then they would not turn it down. Sometimes they would turn it down for an hour and turn it way back up an hour later. So I did start calling 311, but I gave them the courtesy 
of calling them first before I called 311. And that went on for quite some time. Now, you'll see on the list of noise complaints, there are days that have three noise complaints in a row. They started, I think it was in 2019, having a Tuesday night event where I think they called it trivia night, which sounds wonderful, right? Uh, early evening, lovely, lovely thing. They had somebody yelling into a microphone through the sound system of the bar, which was completely drowning out my television for hours. And in between that, they would play loud music because that was exciting. And so I was literally driven out of my home. I used to do my grocery shopping on Tuesday night because I couldn't watch a television show that I happened to like on Tuesday night. Um, now that, you know, I mean, they, they just did nothing to change that uh, despite my requests. And you can say that um, maybe Travis is a better manager, but in, it depends on what manager they have. They've had a lot of different managers and there was a manager um, uh, that did turn the music down in December of 2018 into January of 2019. And when he left, all bets were off. The new manager decided to play the music really loud and there was nothing that I could do about it. Um, the 10th, I got a voicemail from a sergeant at the 10th pre. We lost the sound, right? Is she still Caroline? I don't see Nellie anymore either. <laughs> I'm here. No, if she's... Oh, no, I'm here. Caroline muted or something? No, she's not muted. I think there's a connection issue. Okay. Oh, well. Caroline? No. No. Oh, she's gone now. Yeah, she'll probably call back in. Why don't we? Is there anybody else? That's it. No, I don't have any other hands raised. Okay. Um, I think, Frank, do you have some letters from people who yeah. are not? Yes. Let me who summarize are... those. Uh, someone had also put in chat, although it seems to have disappeared, a guy named David Sloss, who said he's with the. Uh, 300 West 19 Block Association, and they do not support this application because they don't think uh, the neighborhood needs another bar and they'd rather see some something else go into that spot. Um, all right, so I'm going to do the ones in favor first. Um, I assume everyone has read them, and I'll just summarize the, uh, the most uh, salient points. Uh, Sorry, I'm just gonna find one more. Okay, in favor. Um, one person who lives in 365 building says he believes there are competing interests. And if the interests are balanced in a holistic compromised manner, I believe the situation can be beneficial to milk and honey. I'm in favor of approval of a liquor license with strict enforceable provisions. Uh, he suggests that their outdoor seating shut down uh, at 10 p.m., uh, which he says they had agreed to with the building, not last call, but shutting down, and that there be no additional outdoor structures beyond what is there now. Um, someone else, uh, oh, this is Joshua Miles and Lori, who's uh, husband and wife who spoke. Um, someone else says, I live nearby at 360 West 21st. Uh, they're uh, they've been an excellent and conscientious neighbor. The staff is extremely friendly and welcoming, and their patrons tend to be uh, quiet and respectful. He, uh, he says he walks his dog every day between 1030 and 1130, and they're consistently dark and quiet at that hour. Um, someone else who lives on the same block at the corner of 21st and 9th 
Uh, says since they've arrived, they've been a great addition and a courteous neighbor. They operate completely reasonable hours. Uh, it's a charming local beer bar with a lovely staff. Um, I've been very disappointed to see what seems to be some sort of organized opposition to a nice neighborhood place that operates completely reasonably and adds a great local pub to our community. And then finally, we have another resident of 365 who says he's the president of the board of directors, although he's speaking only in his individual capacity. Uh, he says they've been an excellent neighbor. They had some noise complaints in the past who lived directly over the store, but the owners addressed them immediately. For example, they had mounted a speaker on the ceiling, which the resident above could hear. As soon as we told the owner, he took it down and the issue was resolved. We have not had any complaints in a long while. The business brings much in commerce to a struggling re retail sector. Uh, I've always found the patrons to be well behaved and respectful. Okay, then on the other side, um, uh, someone else who's a resident of the building uh, says the place poses a threat with unmasked patrons lining the streets at all hours. The noise level is unbearable to those who make our homes above and around. Management has continuously ignored requests to moderate the noise from tenants and the expansion would further exacerbate the problems. Um, someone else at 365 uh, lived there for nine years. Milk and Honey is a very noisy and disrespectful bar that attracts a loud and rowdy clientele. And I fear what will happen to our sweet and quiet neighborhood if you allow the expansion. Uh, I have been negatively affected by the bar already because of noisy and disrespectful patrons and because the owners do nothing to respond to noise complaints. My friends and neighbors have complained consistently about noise complaints. Uh, it's been so loud, so late at night since it opened in 2016, doesn't belong in a building where people live. They have a terrible track record of disrespect for the neighbors. Uh, and also talks about uh, showcasing unmasked crowds. Uh, we have someone, something from Lucy who spoke, uh, and then uh, others from Caroline who spoke. Um, that's what I have. And um, I believe though, Inga had one more that uh, I think did not make it on the, into the Dropbox. Inga, did you have another one? I do, I just emailed it to you if you wanna read it or I'm happy to read it. I emailed right. it to you and Bert. And um, now okay, did you use... Uh, Okay, I, I see it. Uh, From Larry Goldblatt. Okay, which uh, which email did you send it to? I don't know. Okay, why don't you just read it? Yeah, I'll read it. Um, or, or, or summarize it if there's a lot of, you know, sort of neutral. Um, it's pretty, it's not that long. So I have serious, so it's from Larry Goldblatt. Uh, I have serious concerns about allowing milk and hops to have a liquor license. These are not responsible people who care about the residents of the neighborhood, particularly those of us who live in the building above them. Their patrons are loud and noisy and disturb us every evening and weekend afternoons. If they become a bar, a larger bar, noisy crowds will gather on the public sidewalk harassing clients or the neighborhood of the neighborhood. Other streets in the area have been experiencing this problem. I would also like to note that they have in the recent past elected two, erected two flimsy unstable tents over the entire sidewalk. Both of these have collapsed during a storm endangering past pedestrians and passers-by. He has photos if, uh, of the tent collapse. Um, please let us have some peace, quiet, and do not allow this bar to open. Very truly yours, Larry Goldblatt, 365 West 20th. So he lives in the building as well. Okay. Okay, thank you. Nellie, did Caroline come back? No, I don't see her. Yeah. Okay, Christine? Yeah, it, it, I don't know. It seems to me that there is a major sound isolation problem in the first, not, not in this bar, but in the first. And I'm wondering whether I would be generally in, in, in opposed to open it, except that I'm wondering whether we have there an opportunity to fix the problem they have today. Because if we deny it, then the problem we have, the, the, the tenants have today is not going to be resolved. 
it's the sound problem is going to stay. If we, if we make the approval subject to doing a complete, you know, sound assessment of this property as well as the last one and a repair, a proper repair job to, uh, you know, uh, really uh, fix mm -hmm. the sound problem, which seems to be inside more than outside. I mean, um, there may be an opportunity there to, um, to fix the problem for the existing tenants. Um, and so that's, that's my suggestion is that we, um, we, we approve subject to, we want to see a, we want them to come back with a sound uh, proofing plan for the old and the new. And, um, and, and then a, a commitment to execute and, and then, you know, out of this trade-off would come some benefit for the existing tenants. That's my suggestion. I would also like to hear something from the um, applicant. As to the soundproofing? And one, in response specifically to what Christine is suggesting, because I think it's a, a very good suggestion. Okay. Uh, moving forward. Um, and to the general... <coughs> comment. Comments. I was trying to find that word. Thank you. Including, including the tree. Someone who's, yeah. whose language was not English is the first language to give me okay. the word. Thank As you. As the tree, if we can get permission from the city to replant it, we would. I talked to Travis about the trivia night the old manager used to run. And we would not do that anymore. That seems to create a lot of noise. And Travis, are you okay with having a sound engineer come in? Yes, so actually my first thing when we were doing a walkthrough with um, the kind of designer and contractor was soundproofing and I brought it up to be on both sides. Um, in the meantime, I've been working on trying to figure out those wires to bring down the speakers as well. Um, a lot of the information um, is slightly skewed. Uh, Rick was previous manager, um, not owner, but, um, and all the staff that was there has since, uh, been switched out with new staff. Um, noise complaints are, um, I have not received any, so I have not uh, been able to talk to any of those people. I do have my phone number uh, at the bar and I can give it to anybody. It's my personal number that I use for work in the, so people can reach me. Um, in all cases, I let my staff know that uh, sound and standing are um, not tolerable, <laughs> sorry, and uh, they need to make sure they're keeping an eye. Now it is um, not, f there are people that have stood and I will say that has happened, but when we see it, we do our best to let them know that they can't be doing that. I have put letters on around the bar on the inside. So uh, stating no drinks on it, no standing, please use tables and chairs. Um, I do not know about the person with the stein um, as we don't have steins at the bar. Um, but if it's just talking about our glass, then I have not received any word about that. And if I had, I would have made sure that that never happens again. Um, in regards to, uh, so besides the sound and besides the standing outside, those are kind of things we are working on. Uh, my goal is to make this community based. Uh, we do have people that live in the building that come in and drink that are regulars, uh, people that uh, work in the buildings next to us that uh, come in for lunch. Uh, we, our goal is, and my goal especially, is to make this community based. So when people want to come in in the afternoon and work on their computer or um, just grab some food, um, we are not trying to be a rowdy bar by any means. If that comes off that way, that is not tech, that is not our representation. Um, I'm, that's why we don't go past. We're not going to be a shop bar. We're not going to be a rowdy bar. We want people to come in and enjoy their time and enjoy craft cocktails, craft beer, things that you can't really get in the area. 
Travis, I have a question, uh, just a follow-up question is, so you are the manager, right? Yes, I became manager uh, right. in March of 2020. So Anything before that? Who is the owner? The owner, uh, his name is Jason. Um, he has, so this is part of one of his businesses. So uh, right now he's just working. He's out of the country just for the meantime, but we'll be back soon. Um, but I am the general manager. Okay. Travis is the one in charge and always there. Okay, Mike, a couple other things um, based on some of the comments I read. Um, Travis, you understand that the closing time of 10 and 11 means that that's the time all the patrons have to be out of the establishment and out of the outdoor seating, correct? Yes. Um, okay. If that means we need to get uh, the doors put on so we can lock it, that's fine. We do leave it open so people that are walking by, if they don't want to be caught in the rain or any other issues, it's really just open to the public. Um, after we close, we, don't, we lock up the chairs. We don't leave anything out. Um, but it does take time to close an establishment. So while we also have indoors, we also have the outdoors, we only have a cook and a bartender. So um, they do their best to be in and out at a reasonable time. Okay, but what, what I'm saying is the patrons all have to be gone by your closing time, whether they're inside or outside. Staff can continue to work. You can put away chairs after that, but it's not 10 and 11 is not last call. It's not you know, last reservation, it's when everyone is, is out, okay? Absolutely. All right. And the uh, idea of, wait, excuse me, Frank. The idea of um, the street structure, um, open 24 hours, as you say to the public in case it rains, it's a good place to duck in, um, may sound like a, a civic benefit um, but I don't think it really is. I think it, it's, it's, it's problematic. I think if you have that structure, you close it. Okay. I don't know what the legalities are, but in terms of the structure, I think you really need to close it. Um, that doesn't, if it's 10 o'clock, you can't just have it open because that invites people to hang out. That is um, something that I'm willing to put up to lock it if that's what you guys are looking for. Well, that's the guideline of the city, by the way. I understand that. Um, right. Really, I just, if somebody doesn't have a drink and they don't have a chair and they're standing there, um, if you want me to get them out, then that is what we'll do. Um, but a lot of times people do stand with their friends and chat while the chairs are being locked and no drinks are in hand. No, but I mean, you know, that's the point. You have to tell them to circle really? because the really? noise, the people when they leave, and you know, I've done that myself. I mean, it's not uh, a negative on you. It's just like we have all done that. We come out and you know, you stay around and you talk with your friends and for half an hour you're laughing, etc., and makes a lot of noise. Okay. Christine, is, is outdoor seating closing at 10 now or is it 10 and 11? It's 11. It's 11, okay. But yeah. they're agreeing to 10 and 11, so okay. Right. Uh, well, the outdoor is still 10 o'clock. Mike, a cup what? Yeah, the outdoor is 10 o'clock closing. For them? For everybody. Oh, really? Okay. For the whole city right now. All right. A couple other things, Mike. I, I, I gather from some of these emails that, that there seemed to be music in there after closing hours. So can, they, can we get a stip that there'll be no music or amplified sound after... 10 on weekdays and 11 yeah. on weekends. Okay. Um, someone also asked that there be no additional outdoor seating beyond what is presently in place. It, uh, that's what well, yeah. we could put there. Sorry? Yeah. The, only, the only way to expand that would be on 20th Street, which we're not doing and which okay. stipulated it, not to do. Okay. Can we agree that there'll be no microphones used at any time to avoid the trivia problem? Yes, I talked to Travis about the trivia. But but no mics for anything else either. No, no microphones. Okay. All right. Uh, Christine. What, about, what about the tree? Are you going to replace that with a mature tree? They have, to, they have to cut the booth in half because they've already extended it the entire length of their space and the gelato space. It covers the tree pit. 
So um, they have to cut their booth in half. The, in regard right. to the tree, um, the surrounding area, um, the fencing part of it was is on the aspect of the building. Um, so that is something I was told not to touch, and I did not. I have emailed Parks about the tree uh, and received no messaging back. Um, oh, but wait, you damage, excuse me, you damage the tree. And built over if it. You, if you, well, you, your operation, your truck, I mean, you know, it's, so you are responsible. And normally if you damage a tree, they, they would give you a huge fine. So if that gets reported to Parks, you're going to get a huge fine. What we are suggesting is that you have to replace the tree yourself. You have to call a green a greenhouse and say, I want a tree, order it, and get it installed. We'll, we'll make sure the city allows us to do that, but it, it wasn't do. obvious. It do. Truck. Come on, Michael. It was a delivery truck. As you said, you can get a $25,000 for fine for taking a tree down. I've, yeah. I know someone who got it, but we want to make sure the Parks Department allows us to plant it. That's there's like an application for doing that. There's an application online for doing that. Everybody does that. Okay, I'll definitely. But they built over it. They've so already what's built going to happen it. with the building over it? And so that's on the basis that I had no, um, I was not aware of a tree issue with the truck. That was before my time. Um, and in the meantime, there was a stump there that had uh, some form of, um, I guess, I don't know if it was rat poison. Um, I asked about the tree. Um, I was told if the city doesn't plant the tree, I didn't know that it was on us. Um, no, even talking to the previous manager, um, I was just told that if nobody uh, deals with the tree within a certain time frame, and I had been, I have been there for, been here for a year or plus, that it comes on to the us to be able to do what we would like with that tree. We can remove the stump. Um, but since I was told that um, they that the property manager for your building or our building, she said to please leave everything as long as it's covered and when we can remove it, um, hopefully. Uh, okay, so now what you have to do is you have to remove whatever you have done over that tree and, and leave it free. What you need to work on because the planting season is, is coming up. So you're going to be planting a tree within, you know, two, three months. And in be, you have to free up that space. That's not your space. That's okay. I'll, I'll look online about the application. Well, just give him the name of somebody who is knowledgeable. Yes. So that they know how to do it. You are not going to do it, Michael. Just No, not me. So you need to find a, a green a greenery, uh, yes. whatever, and, and tell them we need to hire you to go and plant a tree. And, that's and first it. of all, they need to remove the shed from the tree pit. Yes. It's completely yes. covered. So you have to remove the shed for the whole tree pit and you know leave it empty. Nice quick question. Is this really in our purview of what we're able to dictate yes, and request yes, for a recipient yes. looking for a license? Yes, it is. Yes. So when you, I have a couple more things to say before we go on. I can do it now or after before we vote. I just want to reiterate that they have currently a beer and wine license. They are looking to up it to a liquor license, a full liquor license for their current space and add a new space, a currently unlicensed space for a full liquor license, not just beer and wine. So it's not milk and hops, it's liquor full in both spaces. The 500 foot rule is in effect because there are a number of liquor establishments in the area. So they have to, we have to actually as a committee feel that it's in the community's best interest to add a liquor license and then give them an extra liquor license. They've buried the tree pit. They've done many things incorrectly, whether knowingly or not. The managers change. The people in the building have complained. It's not in the community's best interest. And I want to say again, the 500 foot rule. And if they don't have enough staff to watch people, whether it was a Stein or a very large beer glass, 
sitting outside on a Saturday night on one of your bar stools in front of the gelato shop, not in your shed that's covering the tree pit. I just, you need to hire staff to watch your sidewalk if you can't watch it. That's all I have right now. Well, as, as Travis said before, we don't have steins. Could have been it was a glass. It was a large beer glass, and it was Milk and Hops beer glass. I heard it was a Stein. And it was there. I may have said Stein. Forgive me, my mistake. It was the bar stool from inside, not one of the chairs from outside. I'm sorry, I didn't hear it was okay. the bar stool. All right. Is there anybody uh, else from the committee that has a comment? Yeah, just a couple things, Bert. I want to. I asked the committee to read uh, stuff that's in the chat. There are some few comments that have come in. They're not the chat, the Q&A. Uh, but Christine, someone from the public raised a point that I was going to raise. I haven't seen any of these sheds closed in any way. And in fact, if you're following, Same here. If you're following the law, two sides of them are supposed to be completely open. So there wouldn't be any way to, yeah. fully, to fully close a shed. It's only no, the ones that are illegal. No, I you agree know. with you. Right, I, I agree with you. This is, you can't close the shed really, but you are, you should try to, you know, make people move. That's what I'm trying to say. I would say, make people yeah, move. I, I think I know how to say it. All outdoor seating will be evacuated of patrons and the public no later than 10 p.m. nightly. Yeah. But That's I think the I mean. most, most important, I mean, you know, this whole uh, discussion, as, as Inge says, the question is whether the trade-off we're suggesting is in the interest of the community or not. We are suggesting a, a, a trade-off which may be for the interest of the people living just above, but is it in the interest of the rest of the community? And I can't make that call because I'm not living close enough to get that sense but yeah. that's my sense that's my the question on the that's the question on the table and then before before we even get there i mean we would want probably to have the owner and the manager come back once they get the estimates on the on the sound soundproofing and come back with that and say you know yes we're going to do it or not okay well, uh, right. so you're referring to a sound acoustic study and with following the recommendations of the study. For both space. It's, it's for, the, for the old space and they're wanting the new space. Right. And I assume it's, a, it's going to be a unified space. There's not going to be a wall between the two spaces. It's not going to be two separate operations. Travis, am I assuming correctly? There will be an opening between them. Yes. yes, two doors within the, the walls or the wall that we have. So you're not, We're not taking the whole wall down. You're not taking the walls down. No. There's going to be two doors from one space to the other. Can't really take the wall down, the entire wall. Yeah. It's not a structural wall, is it? And there are support columns in between. There's um, three. And so we're going in between. OK. Yeah. So. Christine, to answer you, I was thinking about this today. I don't think I have, in all the time I've been doing this, I have never seen an application like this where people, all of whom are living right, either in the same building or right around there, have such an equal, completely divided view, as, as Bert said at the minute. The patrons are rowdy and a mess. The patrons are well-mannered and quiet. It's... It's just very hard to reconcile, given what we're hearing from people. And people are building. Yeah. Well, we know what happens there. You know, people are in the building, but if they are not on the right side of the building. Everybody is a different place. Some people right, think. Right. Oh, we had that on Ninth Avenue where right. people were saying, oh, I don't hear anything. And this is, this is also not a six-story tenement. This is a 15 story building or so. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, but we also, a small we building. Al yeah. We also heard from two people who live sort of on, on the corners across the street who were strongly supportive of it. Um, so in terms of the outside noise, I would think they would be, you know, a, well, e easily affected. 
Uh, so now we have more, do we have more discussion or you want me to read the uh, new steps again? Last chance, folks. And okay. Christine. Sorry. So the last thing, um, I don't know if it uh, will help um, or if it doesn't just creates more controversy. Um, we did um, receive, I believe that Mike has it a, um, like a petition uh, for all the people in the community. Well, not for everybody, but for a good amount with their address to show how close they are. Uh, we didn't take any ones from anybody that didn't live close um, and people willing to um, in favor. Yeah, that, that petition was handed in with the questionnaire last month. Okay. Okay. So, so Mike, this is, and Travis, this is what I have. Let me, let me know at the end if you uh, disagree with any of this. So there were the four prior stipulations I read from last month that I read earlier. And then the new ones are, applicant will obtain an acoustical report from a city approved licensed acoustician for both the old and new spaces and submit the report to the board office by February 22. Applicant agrees to implement all recommendations of acoustical report. Uh, no music or amplified sound after 10 p.m. Sunday to Wednesday and after 11 p.m. Thursday to Saturday. No additional outdoor seating beyond what is presently in place. No microphones will be used at any time. All outdoor seating will be evacuated of pat patrons and the public no later than 10 p.m. nightly. Applicant will replace tree in front of establishments that had been knocked down. I think you're, you're missing on the tree that they need to shorten their, their outside the, the, remove the shed. Remove. From the well, shed. If, the if shed. they're replacing the tree they're and it can't be done. They gotta move the shed. They gotta move the shed before they can even look at replacing the tree. But my point is if they're. Okay. Yeah, if and they're, so replacing the tree, let's say within this uh, planting season, which is the next uh, yeah, okay. three or four months. So that will make sure. Not, and then as far as the uh, sound, are we asking that they test with the neighbors above? Especially Caroline, I mean, which which is the person who seemed to be completely affected with that. Well, isn't that how everyone does it? I mean, huh? is that? Yeah. I've never I seen a reason. Uh, I, I think we should mention it that it should be coordinated with Caroline and and that they would okay. be in her apartment, because if this person is, you know, I'll say and coordinate with nearest residents, right, in building, okay. Yes. Yes. All right, so Mike, we're, we're gonna say the tree in this planting season and that the, the acoustician has to uh, uh, consult with uh, the nearest residents in the building. Okay. Yeah, you, you, you okay with all of that? Uh, yes, and if somehow we can get their information or I can, Nellie knows my information, I can have them call me and then we can set up appointments for it. Okay. Well, I think the acoustic guys usually know how to do this, so. Uh, well, but they need the contact, yes. Yeah, okay. Need the well, yeah, Nelly has all that. Okay. And, right. and, and, and Mike, let me, I guess, let me ask this question. It may be a superfluous question. The owner is out of the country right now, but yes. who knows how long? I don't know. It sounds kind of mysterious to me. Um, anyway. The owner is not here. You, miss, with the stipulations, agreeing to these stipulations, Travis, implementing these stipulations? Yes. You're speaking for the owner. Travis is basically running the place. Yes, I am. I'm speaking on behalf of him, and uh, he is with my decisions. Okay. Okay. I wanted to be clear on that. Okay. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Motion. Wait, wait. Second. Who made the, who made the motion? Wendy. That was me. Rob. Rob and it's a co-motion oh. from Wendy and Rob. Okay, and who seconded it? The Rob. other one. Rob. Okay. I did. Sabrina did. Okay. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Those opposed. I see one, two, three opposed. 
Okay, anybody abstaining? Present not eligible. Okay. Thank you. We'll see you at full board. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Travis, you probably do want to be at the full board meeting um, in case there are public comments and you want to, you're, you're also welcome to speak for two minutes in the public session. It will be uh, March 3rd. Thank you. Same venue as this. Um, can I receive, uh, I guess, the email invite to the email that's attached to this, uh, Nellie, or like the administrator email? I'm sorry, say that again? Um, I believe the email that you have on this would be my email to get a, a, a link. Oh, no. Travis, you talked about the full are you talking about the full, are you yeah. talking about the full board meeting no yeah. full board operates differently uh, uh everyone is is considered a uh an attendee until the public session and then you're moved in in groups of like three for, to speak at the public session okay thank so you all, the only people who are on screen are the uh committee members and the elected officials understand okay thank you guys Moving along, item number four on the agenda, 859 9th Avenue, Rise Bar. This is uh, also an additional space. The application is to take over an additional space. Change the method of and, and they're asking for a slight change in the hours. They're asking for Thursday to 4 a.m. I mean, yeah, Thursday to 4 a.m. No, Wasn't sorry. it 3 a.m., Bert? 3 a.m. I always read it backwards. I'm sorry. I always read it backwards. I, yeah, to 3 a.m. Previously had been earlier. Um, that's the only change in hours here. I'm so, uh, no, hi everybody. Um, you all know Rise Bar. Ted is here. You all know Ted. We've been before you a number of times on Rise Bar and some other matters. Um, Rise Bar has been operating for about five years. Ted is the principal owner. We originally had planned to come before you at the meeting last month, but the HK4954 Block Alliance had requested that. Um, we postponed so that we had an opportunity to meet with them. Uh, we agreed to that. Uh, Ted met with them as well as others. Um, we didn't get their real response until I think it was just uh, today. Uh, just I think it was just yesterday. Um, the application, as, as Bert says, is principally for an alteration, for approval of an alteration. Next door at the corner of 9th and 56 was Haru, which was licensed. Um, they are out. We are going to be taking over that space. So the principal change is to uh, break through and to expand Rise Bar now to include that space, including uh, its basement, which has a full kitchen. We'll be making a few other changes to some of the seating and putting in an, another vestibule on the corner where Haru is. In terms of the hours, uh, currently Rise Bar has until 2 a.m. during the week and 4 a.m. Friday and Saturday. So there are actually two hours changes that we're seeking. One is to go uh, to 3 a.m. on Thursday nights. Additionally, what we'd like to do on Sunday nights, which has a 2 a.m. close, is on those Mondays that are national holidays, we would like to treat Sunday as a weekend and then have a 4 a.m. close on Sunday. So again, just to be clear, it is not every Sunday. It's only when Monday is a holiday and we have three-day weekends that we would want uh, Sunday to have be 4 a.m. And also if it falls out on Gay Pride, we would want that to be 4 a.m. as well. Uh, the occupancy uh, for the combined space will be a maximum of 141. Um, there will be 23 tables and 96 seats, two bars with 30 seats. 
there will be outdoor space whenever we get back to DCA seating. So we'll be applying for that as well. There will be outdoor seating both on 9th Avenue and 56th Street. On 56th Street, what Ted has agreed to do, uh, the original plan was to have four tops and he's now changed that and we'll only have deuces, which will allow for more clearance between the tables and any obstructions and, and the curb. So um, they will be on the 56th Street side, 17 tables with 56 seats. The outdoor spaces will all close by uh, 10 p.m. Um, we've provided you with a security plan. We have also done a sound study, which was sent to the office. Now he has that. Ted is always, has also done a significant amount of outreach as he always does. He really makes a point, I think more than anybody I know to get out there and speak with the associations and with the residents uh, and with the neighbors. So he's met with the West 55th Street Block Association. They have sent the letter to you. They are supportive of this application and all of the changes that we are seeking, both the alteration and the uh, slight change in hours. We just received, I think yesterday, uh, an email from uh, HK4954. I don't know if Steve is on the call, but um, they have some issues and some concerns. I don't really read from this either support or opposition necessarily. Uh, I see it as they um, are happy about some things and have some questions or concerns about some other things. So if anybody's here from that group, they obviously can address that. Uh, Ted is always, as I said, speaking to neighbors. And um, because we spent so much time and contacted so many people for the spot on 10th Avenue, you'll remember months ago, we brought you hundreds of letters of support. We really don't wanna go back and bother those people again. I would even suggest that the letters that we received in the, for the spot are indicative of support that we have here. Yes, they don't specifically say they're in favor of additional space for Rise Bar because that wasn't before them, but they all speak very highly of Rise Bar and Ted and the people that work there as good and responsible operators. And I think that counts for something even in this application. Um, Ted also went to the building that he's in, the people that live above Rise Bar, that live above Haru. There are 40 apartments or 40 tenants, I forgot which. Uh, there are four vacancies and we've submitted petitions from 31 of them. So effectively 31 out of 36 uh, that everyone that we contacted uh, are in support of this and, and submitted uh, signed petitions that you have. And I think um, that is all I wanted to say. Oh, last point. There are garage doors on 9th Avenue in the Haru space. Um, we're gonna keep those there, but we will keep those closed whenever there's amplified music indoors. And we will, if there's no music notwithstanding, we will close them by uh, 10 p.m. each night. That's it. I guess I should add something about the menu, sorry. Uh, as I mentioned, there is a full kitchen in the basement of Haro and uh, they will, there's an upgrade to the menu. The menu was very light fare and rise bar previously. Uh, Ted will be adding an assortment of burgers, pizza and tacos. He also is gonna be hiring a chef that's worked at a number of other places in the neighborhood. And once that chef is on board, He's going to consult with Ted and they'll probably beef up the menu and have some other uh, substantial uh, items. So the, the uh, food will, uh, will change somewhat. Yeah. One really quick clarifying question. Uh, the letters, the 31 of the 36 units or tenants, um, were they supportive of both the expansion and the expansion of the hours? Uh, there were petitions, and I believe they said, uh, uh, yes, I believe that that's on both. Both of those are on the petition. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I just want to apologize, Donald, in my presentation, my introduction. I forgot about the Sunday. Okay, you got a lot to keep track of, Bert. Holiday Sundays. Okay. Uh, anybody from the committee have a question, comment? 
Inga, were you just doing your hair or raising your hand? Oh, Tui is raising her hand. Uh, Tui? Yeah, hi. Um, in terms of those holidays on Sunday that we just mentioned, um, are we talking federal holidays? Because a lot of companies do the whole optional, Columbus Day is optional, MLK, Martin Luther King Day is optional. Are you just saying across the board every federal holiday? I believe every federal holiday, Ted, is that right? Yeah. Okay, Christine. So I have a few questions here. Um, so the capacity, I understand that your, your permit right now is for 120. So you are essentially adding 21, is that what it is? The C of O that we have, or the, um, the PA that we have for the rise side is 125. Right. we would be adding 75 to the capacity, which would be the Haru space. So we're gonna to have to update the PA to, to reach the 199. So, but you said capacity 141, uh, Donald. I think I mean, we might have misspoke. Okay. Maybe I did. Okay. So uh, it would be good if you were going to uh, stipulate that you are looking for a total uh, PA of 199 and no more, right? Mm -hmm. Frank, maybe. Yes. Where are the queues going to be, the queues to get into the, to get into the show? The line. The line, I'm sorry. Um, well, we're going to continue using the Ninth Avenue side to get inside, as we always done. We have um, been using that for a while and had very little issues. Uh, we are going to put a vestibule on the Haru side as well to stop any noise from going in and out. So you're going to remove the outside vestibule, right? The outside vestibule we're gonna get rid of and we're gonna build right. one in so, indoor. So we actually- need to change that. We need to change that in the application. Okay. It's, it's a little uh, confusing. Uh, yeah, actually the three garage doors that open up that are in front of Ninth Avenue are actually gonna be reduced to two because one is actually gonna be in the vestibule area. I mean, uh -huh. it's gonna stay there, but it should not be open. And the smoking, where are the people smoking? Uh, currently the, the um, place that we're using, there's a tree pit outside of Ninth Avenue and it's just to the left. Well, if you're looking to the street, it's just to the right side. And we've been using that for a while. We haven't had any issues with the smoking. And just technically to clarify, so Donald, you were saying that you are going to apply for a sidewalk cafe and I got confused because I thought the outside right now was under the COVID, you know, DOT guidelines. Yeah, we can't, you, it, that's right. They're all under DOT guidelines. We can't okay. apply, DCA isn't even accepting any applications at this point. Okay, so because I think maybe that's, all right. So this is not an application for sidewalk cafe. That's right. Okay. I'm done with the questions. Thank you, Christine. Anyone else from the committee? Uh, Nelly, do we have anybody from uh, the public? Yes, we have three people. Oh, no, six, seven, it's rising. Hold on. Uh, the first person, the first person I have is Barbara. Barbara? I live almost directly across the street between uh, 8th and 9th Avenue on 56th Street in a building with about 500 units. And I've been in touch with many of my friends about this. And our main issue is the late night closing. We don't, we've seen lots of bad activity along 9th Avenue over the years with uh, people really getting uh, injured, uh, killed even when these establishments are open so late and people come out with weapons and punching and beating each other up. And I don't see why anybody should have a 4 a.m. closing. Uh, and it sounds like the Sunday extensions for holidays is just a way to get around it so you can be open more often on, at 4 a.m. Totally against it with many neighbors in the community also against it. Thank you. You're welcome. Next I have is Mitchell. Mitchell? 
Yes, thank you. Thank you for doing this and thank you for taking our comments. I've lived in the neighborhood for over 30 years. And over that time, uh, I guess my overall point is that the less that we see um, units combined and the more diversity we have in the neighborhood, the better. The more businesses we have oriented to people who live here and the less to people who are coming in from outside of the neighborhood, the better. And during the time that I've lived here, uh, repeatedly over and over and it seems faster and faster these days, we are losing diversity in the neighborhood. We're losing, uh, we want to have the museums and theaters and cultural institutions. We want to have shoe repair stores and laundromats and dry cleaners. We want bakeries and ice cream and donut shops. We want daycare centers and health facilities. We want specialty food purveyors. We want bike stores and hospitals and police and fire stations and houseware stores and gift stores and bookstores and art supply shops and toy stores. And these things have been uh, disappearing and they've been consistently replaced with box stores and nightclubs. Um, I don't know if anybody knows this isn't exactly in Hell's Kitchen, but around the corner, I'm on West 57th. Uh, we had a, of all things, we had a Bible museum. It's now a Target. And uh, that and the nightclubs, I think, are killing us. And um, I think uh, that Rise has basically, as far as I know, been a good neighborhood, neighbor and part of the neighborhood. Um, I don't see a big issue with them, although I have noticed that I remember uh, them coming before CB4 to open, and they have consistently, aggressively pushed for later hours more nights, uh, more space. And I think they were, the decision was made to curtail those hours when they first opened. So really this is revisiting an issue that was addressed and settled at that time. But uh, last thing I'll say, just uh, want me to repeat myself, but um, no, I don't wanna live in a neighborhood that's a destination for people coming from elsewhere in the borough or elsewhere in the city or, or anywhere else. I want it to be a place for those of us who live here and part of this community, I'm calling on the uh, community board to stand up for us. Thank you. Thanks for taking the time. Can I make a comment on that? Um, Ted, I'd like you to wait. Okay, I'll wait. I want to hear what everybody else has to say. Okay. Thank you. Next, I have Troyer. Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Great, um, thank you for having me. Um, I am a patron um, of Rise Bar. I also live in the area. I am in very, very strong support of the, this expansion and ours. Um, Rise is very clean, um, not only pre-COVID on the inside, but now especially um, with the outdoor seating. Um, the sidewalk is always clean. Um, all of their equipment is always clean. The staff is friendly. Um, they're, they're always have all patrons out by the 10 o'clock time. Um, if any patrons try to stay, the staff make sure that they, that they don't. Um, if we're talking about crime in the area and, and safety reasons, um, I think it's only a better thing to have this expansion we you know they would have a security guard on the street there'd be more security on the street um so i think it would help with crime um and I, I, I the last person said that it's not for people basically implied that it's not for people who live in the community which i i really i don't agree with i live in the community it's for me i have tons of friends who live in the area and in Hell's Kitchen in this community. Um, it is for them. It is for a lot of people, not only LGBTQ, for straight people, for every everybody who lives in the area. Um, everyone is welcome. Um, so I, I just think it's it would be a really great thing for the community. Thank you. Next, I have Christopher. Unmuted. 
Hello? Yes, go ahead, Christopher. Oh, okay. Hello, community board. Hi, Teddy. Um, I am, I'm here today because I've only gotten wind of this in the last couple of weeks, uh, the changes that are uh, about to go on apparently with Rise's expansion into the Haru space. And I remember five years ago when we went through this in the past uh, about hours, about noise levels, and I'm totally opposed to this. Um, this time it's expanding into the space under where I live. Um, I did see the sound report that Mr. Bernstein referenced earlier, and I read through it uh, as a sound engineer. I understand everything that's in that sound report, uh, but I wanted to expand on it a little bit and talk about what decibels are. Uh, decibels are not measured in a linear fashion, they're measured exponentially. So within that sound report, the apartments directly above that space were measured at at least 20 decibels above what the ambient noise is. That's not one degree of input equals one degree of output, 20 degrees of input equals 20 degrees of output. With decibels, it means that's a hundred times of input. So that's something to keep in, in context that wasn't put in the report. And I do understand the difference between A-weighted and C-weighted. C-weighted will tell you the base frequencies that are come out of these places. However, his conclusions were, were satisfying to me, distributing the sound, soundproofing. And as I understand it, it's gonna, it's gonna need to be done right and that the landlord is gonna wind up having to put that kind of soundproofing in. Um, I'd also like to echo some of the things that I've already heard spoken about tonight. Um, about concerns um, about where the smokers will go. Currently, I do see smokers turn the corner after Haru is closed. Now they're permanently gone, but prior to that, after they closed at 10 p.m., a lot of the smokers would go around the corner of the building where the security is not looking. Um, I have concerns about the menu. It's finger food or pub food. It's not gonna be another restaurant. And so far, although Mr. Bernstein did say that the menu was expanding, we just haven't seen that yet. Uh, the addition of security uh, around our residence, I should probably add, I live in the building. My address is 400 West 56th Street. It's the exact same building as 859 9th Avenue. So I live two floors above uh, Haru, the former Haru space. Um, that's about all I have to say for now. I do know that there are other people in the building. I was not contacted. That's probably because I have very strange hours with the sound work that I do. Uh, but I am totally opposed to this expansion. We already had this issue when Rise moved in two years ago, five years ago. And I can hear the sound from the other side of the building and I can measure it myself, but it's not over the ambient sound. So I don't call 311 or the police to disturb them just because I have my own measurement tools and I know it's, it's not going to measure that way. I am fearful that when they move underneath me, we'll hear it. That's all I have to say for now. Uh, Christopher and Teddy. Um, so the 40 apartments that, that, that you tried to survey and you got the 30 letters from, is that including the, the building Mr. Costello lives in? So it is one building, even though it has two addresses? Correct. Okay, thank you. Hey, you, Christopher. Nellie? Next, I have Hello. David. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, uh, my name is David Serrano. I live at 520 West 48th Street, and I've lived in the neighborhood for 11 years. I am definitely for the expansion of Rise Bar. Uh, I know they've been looking for a space for over a year now, and they've shown over and over again that they're willing to work with the board to make an expansion of their business happen, but yet they keep getting denied, even though they do all these things to help like appease the uh, board. And I think it's unfair considering they're great neighbors. Um, of all the establishments that I personally patronize in Hell's Kitchen, there's nobody that adheres as strictly to the COVID operational rules as they do, and it's probably to their detriment 
because so many of their comp uh, competitors are not adhering to those rules, but they do it anyway because they understand that, you know, it's very important to be a good neighbor. And this space opened up next door because the former business could not survive the pandemic. But if Rise Bar can survive and thrive, we should all allow them the opportunity to do so. Um, this isn't um, to make it, you know, this isn't the time to make it more difficult for our neighborhood businesses. And I fully support their expansion. And I look forward to patronizing uh, the new expanded space. And I hope the board approves. Thank you. Next, I have Brett. Hello, my name is Brett and I am here in support of Rise Bar. I live on the block. I find them to be good neighbors. Uh, they keep their area clean. They have security. Uh, <coughs> whenever I go inside, it's well maintained. Um, I would like to remind the board, I've, I've gone to multiple ones where they applied for a spot on 10th Avenue and they were told that they needed to find a licensed venue. They found the venue next door, which was licensed. They were denied again. They were told in the meeting to find a space on 9th Avenue. They've now found another space, which is right next door. I feel like uh, from the times that I've gone to the meeting and listening to Ted on these, they've done everything that you guys have required of them and they've tried to work with you. And so I hope you will, uh, in the spirit of community, approve this because we've lost so many businesses. Uh, Haru was one of my favorite places, but I would love to see them expand in there and be able to use a kitchen and to have uh, more food, I would, I would definitely patronize them more. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Next I have Amy. Hello, my name is Amy. I am a 28 year old tenant of the same building that works, uh, that, that Rise is a part of. Um, I have frequented Rise Bar. I think it's a great place. They have a great atmosphere. The staff is kind. Uh, they're very compliant with rules and regulations. I go with my boyfriend all the time. I go with my friends all the time. No matter who I'm with, I feel comfortable and supported. Um, I also think that this is exactly one of the, the type of business that this neighborhood would benefit from. I've encountered a variety of people there, all ages and, and affiliations. And I think that it's exactly the kind of community I want to be a part of. So I, again, live in the building. Um, I've never had a noise complaint. I have a dog. I walk outside every evening, never encountered anyone unruly, never seen a customer who has made me feel uncomfortable or unwelcome. And I hope they get this gets approved and I can continue to be a customer. Thank you. Thank you. Next I have Timothy. Hello. Can you guys hear me yet? Yes. We yes. Can hear all right, hi, my name is Timothy Guest. I live uh, directly above uh, Rise Bar at 400 West 56, apartment 1F. I have been in front of you guys uh, pre a couple times before to talk about the um, any noise issues that you've had. Um, I have said before that I do not have any noise complaints, uh, especially now that there's outdoor seating and my apartment is right on 9th Avenue, my windows, I would be able to hear any issues if there were. I'm currently in school pre-med um, and I have to do everything remotely for my classes. If I did have noise complaints, I would be downstairs immediately to complain about that because I do not want any interference with the GPA that I have to maintain. So I am for RISE. I am saying that there is no noise. And if there's any issues of thinking that there will be noise coming from lines, if they have people sitting outside now and I don't have any noise complaints. I really don't believe that if there's people five waiting online with the security guard there, there will be 
noise that is going to disrupt anyone. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you. Next, I have Patrick. Hello. Uh, thanks for having me. And um, uh, I live directly uh, across the street, Kitty Corner from Rise Bar. Um, I've been not only myself, but my friends and my neighbors in this building have frequented Rise Bar. We support this effort. Uh, by way of context, it might be helpful for uh, you folks to know that before Rise Bar, those two spaces were combined previously by a restaurant called Pudanesca. I've lived in this uh, neighborhood in, in this building for uh, almost 18 years. Uh, and so I just wanna say in support, like. It, We've lost a half to two thirds of our restaurants and bars in our little stretch of the neighborhood and the possibility of bringing jobs and people spending money into the neighborhood is a huge plus. And I'm sure you all could appreciate that. I know our neighborhood is not unique in that regard. Um, and in regarding noise, I can say, you know, we, we live on the courtyard side of our building, which is like an echo chamber. We never hear any noise. Uh, we walk our dog at night, noise is not a problem. So in terms of any disruption to the neighborhood outside of the space itself, uh, I can tell you that Rise is a great neighbor and uh, I'm excited to see them expand and I'm excited to see them uh, add food to their, to their offerings. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Nellie, how many more people do we have? 10. Okay, I just like to suggest, I, I think we all very much appreciate hearing what everybody has to say. If uh, you wanna speak and you are basically saying what someone else has said, you can say I endorse and I, I agree with what the previous speakers have said. And if you have something new to add, we certainly would like to hear that. Okay, go ahead. Um, next I have Anita. Anita. Okay, can you hear me now? We can hear you, Anita. Great. Um, I, I just want to mention before I read a, a little speech that I wrote, Bert, um, I just wanted to say that, you know, they're, they should identify whether they are employees of RISE or if they actually live in the neighborhood. And um, I, I do think that that's a valid consideration. Also, Steve Belita had asked me to mentioned that if anything's brought up with his block association, that his members are opposed, that the only ones who were in favor were the plants from Ted. There were a few individuals who came in, they live in the neighborhood, they have never attended the block association meeting before, just came in to talk in favor of RISE and um, they were going to register and they never registered with the Block Association. We have a letter from uh, Steve that we got recently, today in fact. I know, but... but um, I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead, Anita. Yeah, that's okay. But Donald Bernstein said the way it's written, you don't really know how he feels, whether it's for or against. So I guess Donald Bernstein's interpretation is that he can't tell whether he's for or against. So I appreciate that, Bert. You're always kind. And um, anyway, so I just want to read what I have to write a few words. The world has changed and the Ninth Avenue landscape looks different compared to a year and a half ago. Storefronts look empty and restaurants can't open, particularly during the winter. Regardless of what the street looks like, the BLP must consider what is best for the community. Residents don't want to live with a bad operator and Rise was very bad just two years ago. All of the bars and lounges listed on the license history page of this application have been closed by the SLA, with the exception of Rise, who received a hefty fine for overcrowding and failing to maintain a space in an order compliant manner. This one bar affects thousands of men, women, and children who pass by every day. We now have two daycare centers in the neighborhood, one at 58th and 9th, another at 55th by 9th, and now there will be a third um, tuition-based preschool 
in the Park Vendome Caddy Corner from the Haru space. Considering the amount of children passing rides every day, a good neighbor would design and decorate his facade to appeal to, to, appeal to all customers, not just his customers. Ted claims he has learned by his mistakes, but has he? I asked him what the closing time was uh, for on the Haru liquor license. Ted said 2 a.m. Prior to our conversation, I called the SLA and they said the closing was 12 a.m. Ted lied. So has Ted learned his lesson? Is he a good neighbor? Ted admitted Rise has as many as 500 patrons a night and that Haru will add another 600. This is a lot of people on the street when Hell's Kitchen working class needs to sleep. And when you consider that they're gonna be keeping the garage doors and probably the wall of glass on 56th Street, I question what the sound is going to be like on the street and you know how it's going to affect the many people who live above and pass by. I worry about the many people that will just be out and about at a late hour and the disruption to the neighborhood. So I appreciate this time. Um, I hope that you will, I'm from the Park Vendome. I know that um, the board wrote a letter on behalf of the Park Vendome to the BLP. I do hope that everyone had a chance to read it and to consider what was written. Park Vendome is a very large building with probably a thousand residents. So do take that into consideration. Anita, actually, I was going to—I was hoping you or someone from the Park Vendome would would be on here because I wanted to ask about that letter. So sure, came, I'm the secretary to the board. Okay, I'm one so, of the I'm one of the uh, officers. We just have okay. a question of uh, identification. Yeah, so it, it's on behalf. Of, it, it came from the Park Vendome Board of Managers on behalf of the Park Vendome Condominium Association. Is that made up of? Is that association made up of people who? you know, own and live there? Or is it like- Yeah, the, the Park Vendome is a condominium. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, the board consists of nine individuals. And we spoke to many of our neighbors and, you know, we're very active. I've been on the board for 20 years, Frank. Okay. So I know, I know the neighborhood. I've lived in the neighborhood since 85. Um, and we, we know how the people feel in the Park Vendome. The board- has the ability to um, write on behalf of the association. I mean, that's in our bylaws. Okay, I know I was just asking, it was unclear to me whether it was the letter. Yeah, I, like I thought so, but it was sent to you by um, two separate managers. So you do have uh, the manager who forwarded it as opposed to the president of the board. And if you look at the email carefully, you will see that one of the email addresses says board at parkvendomecondo.com. That blind copies all, uh, excuse me, nine members of the board. Okay, thank you. So everyone on the board has seen the letter, you know, anyway, yeah. Okay, thanks Anita. Thank you guys. Next, I have Darren. Thanks so much. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be in front of you again. Um, again, my name is Darren Major. I have the pleasure of being um, the executive director of outreach for the New York Gay Flag Football League um, and also a soon to be resident of Hell's Kitchen on 56. And I have to speak highly in favor of this as a um, sponsor and a partner with um, Rise Bar. From day one, they've helped us um, do phenomenal things from philanthropic efforts of raising money, using their space, donating um, products as well as time and talent for that. So when we talk about being a community partner, Rise epitomizes that um, in so many ways. We have we have charity functions there on regular. Um, when During the summer, when things were in a lull, and as we know, Hell's Kitchen got real dirty, um, Rise was one of the organizations that helped us get together for a cleanup campaign. Um, and as far as as a patron coming to Rise, some people are talking about the noise. There's nothing different about Rise. I'm not sure why it's got this magical appearance of 500 people appearing on the corner after a night out. 
the entryway and exit is always clear. There's no need for security heavy handing anyone. We just gracefully leave and go as if we're going to any other bars that might be on Ninth Avenue. In a time where bars are closing, businesses are closing, the idea that rise with the smallest with, with a smaller um, outdoor uh, a blueprint than other spaces is able to be able to grow their business and the idea of expanding and now adding new jobs, new opportunities for people to have dining options. Bars and restaurants are closing. The, the gentleman said, book bike shops and things like that. We don't want empty spaces because then that leads to loitering. We have business, traffic on the street leads to increased um, safety and increased revenue. Uh, Ted and John and the crew at Rise have always been stellar. We talk about diversity. My football league encompasses the LGBTQ community as well as our straight allies and trans individuals. Rise is a place that they can go and feel comfortable because they see themselves in the staff. It's a comfortable space where they can just relax and get a chance to really embrace what Hell's Kitchen is supposed to be and not this new twist it's putting on where they're kind of blocking out what trying to create this new model of what Hell's Kitchen should be. I think diversity comes in all forms and Rise kind of epitomizes that in my opinion. So me and the 1200 members of the NYGFL fully support this expansion and hopefully you'll do the same. Thank you. Next, I have Kevin. Hello, thank you very much for taking the time to listen to me. Um, I am uh, part of the Hell's Kitchen working class community and I uh, live in 400 West 56th Street. I'm in full support of this uh, application by Rise to Expand. They have always been um, clean, courteous to me, and we've never had any issues with sound in the building. Um, it's a type of diversity that we want and I want as a resident of, of Hell's Kitchen in this neighborhood. In the time and place where we see businesses shutting down, we have someone that is willing to step up and expand into space, expand business, and bring in jobs in the neighborhood. And that's what we want here. And I will yield my time. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to reiterate Bert's point. Um, it's already quarter of uh, nine and we're on number four of a nine item agenda. So I really ask people, um, you know, we've heard the points about making jobs and opening when everyone is closing. So please just, um, you know, say you're in support and sign on uh, and then, you know, add any new points you'd like to make. Thank you. Next I have uh, Fabian. Hi there. Um, yep. Yeah, so uh, to that point, I just want to uh, reiter reiterate my support uh, for Rise uh, getting these expanded um, hours in space uh, due to, you know, businesses not uh, mm -hmm. doing well, um, them being great operators and being strict um, with their rules and enforcements in these times of COVID. And the only new thing I would like to add is having attended several of the block association meetings. Um, I think one thing that stood out to me was uh, Ted and uh, Tracy, the managers, all their willingness to kind of be part of the community and address issues with the community as they come up um, and really work with people. I don't think it's fair to like expect that there's never gonna be issues, um, but having a willingness to truly um, have a conversation and address an issue immediately um, is something that really stood out to me. So I support them. Next, I have Mitchell. Mitchell. Okay, I'm going to move on. Thank you. Yeah, I, I spoke already, actually. Yeah, thank you. I was just going to say that. Okay. Um, hold on one second. Next, I have Sterling. Sterling. Okay, I'll come back to Sterling. Next, I have Tracy. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hello, everyone. 
Um, I just want to touch on because over and over throughout all these meetings, um, oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. I'm the GM of RISE for over three years now. And uh, it seems the bulk of what I'm hearing is uh, the concerns are outside, noise, the quality of life for uh, our surrounding neighbors. And I just wanna, and I've also heard the word nightclub come up quite often. And I just wanna take the opportunity to say that uh, there's a huge difference between a, a bar and a nightclub. Um, the moment I came on board to rise, I have reached out to Midtown North which is Detective uh, Mike Dugan of Community Affairs, Sergeant Siciliano, Lieutenant Corley. I say that to say I've always had a habit and, and for years to uh, keep constant communications with them. So in some of these complaints that I keep hearing, it, 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 for me, it's a little bit confusing that if we were such a nuisance to the neighborhood, um, I would have heard because they all have my direct email and cell phone for years. Um, I've always reached out periodically, and I, I'm, I have to say that I am a little bit confused by some of these complaints that I've heard uh, that's come up quite often. We have security in place, and I dare say for a bar, we have more security staff governing, reducing sounds, whether you're entering, leaving, smoking, to bypassing pedestrians that has nothing to do with RISE, down to idling cars are being moved. Be, be it sometimes uh, a term that I'm hearing lately is the fast and furious, just people zipping down, up and down ninth, you know, uh, speeding and maybe even idling cabs waiting for pedestrians that have nothing to do with RISE. We constantly step up so that we, uh, to ask them to either move up, turn down their music, um, and, and, and I, the, the, our property, even past right now, trying to take over Haru, and their uh, old staff are very well aware of it. We sweep up our front and left and right of the businesses every hour on the hour and thoroughly at the end of the night. Reason being is that they do close, the deli closes a little earlier, and that is just to be in good standing with all of our neighbors, not just residents, but also our uh, our business neighbors. So um, I hope that you guys will be in support of this expansion and we will continue to operate in good faith. And um, I also don't have any issues to uh, give you guys my direct contact info for any issues in the future. Um, I actually spoke with Dugan again today, um, earlier this afternoon, just to make sure, are there any issues that I'm unaware of? And he basically said that literally in the past three years since I've been here, there has been zero issues. Thank you. Next I have Patrick. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Nelly. Uh, my name is Patrick. Uh, I won't say anything that anyone else has said. I live across the street at the Park Vendome. Um, I am tired of hearing the Park Vendome uh, board persecute Ted Arenas and this building. I have been watching the Park Vendome board persecute this man since I think 2015. I have personally emailed board members at the Park Vendome asking them to stop persecuting this applicant. I think they're good neighbors. I know New York is a scary place, but I think we should be really grateful that um, Ted has this business and that he does as well as he does. And I beg this board to not look at that letter and think that any, any of the 500 plus people who live in the Parkman Dome are aware that that letter was sent. Um, they might have the legal authority to speak on our behalf, but trust me, just like the last letter, the one they sent on December 13th, 2016, that has never made it into any of the minutes of the Park Vendome, they just, I don't know why they have it out for this guy, but um, there's dozens of us who live in the building who think the place is great, and I live closer to 
rise bar than anyone on that board. Aside from the board members that don't even live in the tri-state area, I live closer to that place than Anita McDonough. I don't hear anything. Have a good night. Uh, Patrick? Yes, Frank. Uh, so so this, this did come from the, the, the board that is elected by the, the owner residents, correct? That is, that is correct. When our board chooses to speak out against a local business owner, they don't ask us ahead of time. They just use their authority as having been elected, but they don't poll the, um, the 500 or the 1,000 people who live in the building when they want to speak out against a local business owner. Okay. So was there any kind of meeting with no, discussed? No, no, no. So, so, so what you're saying is it's the, there were nine people on the board? Uh, yes, there are nine uh, people on the board. Yes, and a few of them, a few of them even live in the Parkman Dome. <laughs> so, so this is this is a vote of the nine people based on their sort of duly elected authority, if you will. I, I don't know if it was a unanimous vote uh, okay. to send but, to send out that. Uh, we'll, but, we'll we'll never know that. Okay, but at least a majority vote. I'm just trying to understand exactly what this is and isn't. Okay, That's I think how you we'll... I think you understand. Yes, thank you for speaking. Have a good night. Next, I have Barbara. This will be very, very short. I was the first person to speak about the 4 a.m. closings, which seems to have gone by the wayside. And I would just like to say, if the board is inclined to approve this expansion, I think they should negotiate something on the communities side and for the rest of us who aren't in favor of this and make every night no later than 2 a.m. closing. Thank you. Now I, I also, by the way, I live in the park Vendome too, but I didn't think that was worth bringing up. Nellie, can we make sure that people only speak once? <laughs> yes, sorry about that. Next I have John. John Clifford. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, my name is John Clifford. I also live in the Park Van Dome. I'm here because I became aware of the letter from the board today um, from the Park Van Dome opposing this and representing that it was speaking for the 1,000 working class residents that live here in Hell's Kitchen in our building. Uh, that is not the case. This has never been discussed with the residents at large. The board can say, I guess, or do what they want. They do not speak for me. I am not opposed to this application. Um, and to answer the co-chair's question, uh, there are nine members of the board, but if they get quorum, they could have as few as four votes uh, opposed to this. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Next, I have Robert. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Hi, I live um, directly above uh, the bar. I, I, or I should say, I live above the bar. I live two floors above. And I would say that I do oppose the expansion. Um, noise has repeatedly been an issue, both before COVID and after. And um, smoke uh, wafts through our windows, or it wafted through our windows before COVID. And we have a two-year-old infant um, who uh, obviously lives with us and um, yeah and then everything um, and I also support the diversity of our neighborhood that's all. Robert do you live ab above the current rise bar or the Harrow space? The current rise bar. Okay. Next I have Craig. Uh, good evening. This is Greg Lynn uh, from the HK Block Association slash Worldwide Plaza as well. Um, I would like to reiterate what people had mentioned earlier regarding support for Rise Bar. Um, as somebody who unfortunately had to deviate from our Block Association and create a different scenario, um, and I think it's precedent to some degree of where um, 
what establishments we should be favoring in our community. Um, this is not boxers. They're not open until 4 a.m. with parties down the, the lane. They abide by all their rules, yet we put them through and they're getting their expansion and moving their liquor license. Uh, I know that I live and reside only 10 blocks down and don't live there directly, but uh, numerous clients of mine in the residential and uh, community reside in there, in Park Vendome, and none have ever actually mentioned any issues. It's a safe space. And also from a local business perspective, as we've already lost therapy and we're losing other, in, uh, you know, the Renaissance Diner was supposed to come in with a food option. Uh, the comment earlier regarding only small bites and things like that, we don't have an opportunity at this point to have a dining slash a safe space for diversity in the community. Most of them are shuttering and closing. And I would applaud Teddy uh, for actually moving on and trying to bring something in light into here. Uh, so again, I am full force for this. And uh, the letter that came from the Block Association for 5152 would be uh, different from opinion. Thank you. Okay, next Thank I you. have Caroline. Hi, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Wonderful. Thank you for taking the time. I'm also a tenant at 400 West 56th Street, and I want to reiterate support for Ross. They're excellent tenants. I've, we've had no problems with noise. And as a registered nurse practitioner, seeing them want to expand gives me hope. Thank you. Next, I have, I'm sorry if I don't pronounce the name correctly. Silvetta. Silvetta. Okay. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Apologies. I can hear you. Um, you know, I really didn't want to speak tonight and um, had hoped to um, not have to address some of the issues that we've addressed in the past. Definitely Teddy and I have developed a relationship in order to address some of the constant noise complaints that we've had in the past, but me sitting here and, and not saying anything and, and going along with the flow that, you know, me living on top of rise, that there is no noise is, and that there is no complaints and that no, no tenant is um, bearing the grunt of an issue would be a, a lie. Um, you know, definitely does the management of rise help to address that force expanding hours to to have later times and, and more noise fill through the building I, I just I can't possibly um, for my well-being um, uh, approve that you know Carolyn the woman who spoke about the bar before and was interrupted you know told a story that's very similar to mine um, you know I, I can't watch TV I can't take a bath you know the music definitely permeates my apartment it's affected my way of life to the point that I can probably cry on this call. And, you know, yes, Teddy and I have a great relationship. I, I can't say anything against that. You know, he does help to address some of the situations, but, you know, at the end of the day, extended hours are only going to continue to impact my life. And I, I can only foresee myself sleeping two to three hours a night on a weekend um, because we've now, you know, uh, allowed more hours. So, you know, um, 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 it's been years of, of issues and, and, you know, I, and, and yes, we've, we've, we've come to eye to eye to, to address some of that, but um, the complaints haven't necessarily completely subsided and, and yeah. the noise is definitely um, still, still prevalent. Where, where do you live in the building? Do you live above the old rise bar space? I live above the old rise bar space, yeah. Okay. And how far above? What floor? I live on the third floor, which is technically just two stories up. Okay. Thank you. Next, I'm going to try Sterling Cox again. Yeah. Uh, and also, Nellie, as, as someone in chat, Karen Beck, 
asked to speak. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, can you hear, hear me? You. Can you hear me, Nellie? Yes. All right. Good evening, folks. My name is Sterling, and I am the head of security at Rise Bar. Now, I've heard everyone's concerns, especially those of Anita's and Mr. Costello. All I can say is that our clientele we've dealt with for years, so we have relationships with them. We feel comfortable with them, they feel comfortable with us. And I want the other, pay, other people who live in the area to feel comfortable with us. I work at the club on Fridays and Saturday nights. I'm willing to give my number, my personal phone number to anyone who has any concerns about any goings on at Rise Club, Rise Bar. You know, the staff that works there have worked with this particular clientele for years. I personally have worked with this particular clientele for years. It's an older clientele that comes to rise to socialize and network. It's not a dance or party crowd. That's why we don't have issues with noise and noise complaints. The front door is regulated. The smoking areas are regulated. We don't have the problems of four or 500 people leaving at the end of the night because during the course of the night, since these are older people, people who have come to socialize and network, they funneled out through the course of the night. I can't remember in the past three or four years having more than 20 or 30 people leave the club at, at the end of the night. So I've listened to everyone's concerns. I wanna thank all those who uh, gave us compliments on our, our performance, as far as trying to maintain relationships with the people in the neighborhood. And uh, I will make myself available to anyone, anyone that has any concerns, especially Anita and Mr. Costello. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I have Steve Valida. Hello, uh, Steve Valida. I'm the chair of HK4954. Um, heard a lot of people speak tonight. Um, I heard Greg Lynn, who was part of our block association, but tried to usurp power and start his own. And he was uh, told by CB4, Chair Lowell Kern, that he's not our block association. They tried to basically overthrow our block association. But Greg spoke up tonight, pretending to be HK, uh, our block association, stating that he's in favor and we need this bar. He recently spoke a few months ago against boxers opening up because it was across the street from Worldwide Plaza where he lives because he didn't like the noise that would bother him from the people on the roof or the people out in front. And that is a problem that we heard, I heard from members of our block association. There were those that came, there were patrons of the bar that came and they all get to speak at our block association and they all wanted to be part of the community yet none of those people that spoke um, and there were people that spoke tonight that said they live in the neighborhood and they support the bar that never signed up for our Black Association, have never been to a community meeting, um, including Sterling, Darren, uh, a few others, uh, that we would love to have them be part of a Black Association. We work well as a community. I wrote that in my letter. The concerns that the community has are the 4 a.m. closings, the late hours, the, the people out on the sidewalk, the open the, the many open windows that can be open, not just garage doors on Haru, that's gonna affect people that live next door and, on the, and across the street. Um, those are our concerns of the late hours. Um, no, one's, no one spoke out that they didn't, for, for me, that you know, Ted's not a good, hasn't been a good operator. It's the concern of expanding it. They wanted to be a quiet little club when they started and then they became a karaoke club. They became a stage show. And that's going to, and then they told us they were going to be a restaurant. And, and Ted was forthcoming. He said, no, we want to make that whole space rise bar. Those are the concerns. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm just a little uh, perturbed that Greg Lynn decided to pretend he was part of HK after trying to take over our block association and putting down, I mean, uh, all in favor of a bar as long as it's not in his neighborhood and then trying to fight boxers, which we approve boxers. Boxers is a good neighbor, uh, good, uh, good works with the community. So thank you. Yeah, Steve, Steve, one question. Your, your letter said that when Rise first opened, 
someone said they did not want to take over the whole Kudineska space because they thought that would be disruptive. Yeah, that was John Blair. Uh, when we spoke with him, he came to the meeting, came to our meeting, and he came to uh, your meeting uh, before you were the chairs. And he said, you know, we, 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 were, we could take the whole space. They're offering it to us, but we decided not to because that would be too disruptive for the neighborhood, too big for us to, to um, take over. Those were his words, not mine. I'm not making that up. Um, they said that they wanted to be inconspicuous. They wanted to be just a little club where people could go hang out and meet their friends. We were all for that. That was great. We were in favor of it and we gave them our uh, approval, but that changed, it kept changing over time. And that's what's upsetting people in the community. They keep changing the narrative. And honestly, Ted can speak to that. They started out as a little club where, where people just met and hung out and they became a, for a karaoke bar. Then they started a stage show, which they didn't have approval for. And that's where people just figured this is just going to keep getting out of hand more and more and more. And they don't, uh, they don't talk about that, Frank. I'm ready to talk about it. Okay. okay now let's wait. Let's wait. see if we have some more people from the uh, community. And then I would like you to have some time. Okay. Okay, next I have Karen. Good evening. My name is Karen Beck and I live at the Park Vendome. Thank you so much for having me. And Ted, thank you so much for communicating with me. I did speak to Ted about my concerns, so he is aware. Rise is expanding because they want well, my original understanding was they were expanding to provide a restaurant, but my understanding originally was they were going to be a separate restaurant and they were going to be a separate area and the community in a whole was going to get this traditional restaurant, but that is not the case. This is going to be one space and they're going to serve light fare and brunch on the weekends, but they're there are no entrees on the menu or soups or appetizers that are traditionally associated with restaurants. So that is my concern because the community really does need a restaurant, a place that you can go and sit and just hang out. The other thing that concerns me is the 4 a.m. close. I'm opposed to the 4 a.m. close. I'm for a 2 a.m. close. Thank you so much for having me and I wish you the best, Ted. Thank you so much. That, that was the last speaker. Okay, Ted, no, wait would a you second, like to say Bert. something? Bert, why don't you let me uh, summarize some of the things that- uh, Summarize, you know. okay. So first- I'm sorry, Frank, there's some comments in the Q and A that I, I think or worth uh, reading? I include that. In uh, Mr. I include Marks that. Go yes, ahead. I'm including that is what I'm going to read. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, so first we got an email and then a chat from um, someone else who lives in the Park Vendome that I'm just going to read. You received a letter today signed by the Park Vendome Condominium Board of Managers purporting to express the Park Vendome Condominium Association's unequivocal opposition to, to this application. That letter is a misrepresentation by a renegade board of managers. I am a unit owner and a former member of the board of managers, and I was offended when I received a copy of this letter from another owner. The condominium established a community affairs committee years ago to keep the board and the community <laughs> apprised of relevant activities in our community. The board's role was to disseminate information to our owners and residents so that individuals could make informed decisions and take action appropriate to their personal views. This issue was not presented to or discussed by the Condominium Association as a body. It is outrageous that the Park Vendome Board of Managers, without the constituency's knowledge and consent, would present their personal opinions to you as a statement of the sense of our varied and diverse community. Um, and just to sort of quickly summarize some of what's in the packet, um, I think as uh, Ted may have mentioned, you know, there's a summary of 
the support they got, a total of 418 letters, including 18 from uh, Park Vendome residents. Um, Steve Belita talked about his, his letter and his concern. Uh, the West 55th Street Block Association uh, supports the application. Uh, they say uh, Mr. Arenas and Rise Bar have been good neighbors for the past few years. In the beginning, we were worried about late night noise with the 4 a.m. closing, but they had worked very hard to keep noise levels down and been aware of their responsibilities to the neighborhood. Indeed, two residents who live on 9th Avenue facing the bar have shared at our recent meetings that they never hear anything from the bar. Uh, after hearing a presentation and given the past four years of cooperation from the bar about neighborhood matters, the West 55th Street Block Association is in support of Rise Bar. We expect them to continue to be good neighbors and wish them success in their new business venue. Um, the letter, the, the uh, letter from the Park Vendome Condominium Association, it basically makes the points that they don't believe it's going to be a functioning restaurant. Um, that it's really going to be an extension of Rise Bar, um, that Haru operated within normal hours, um, but this is going to stay open much later. Uh, they do not like the fact that the glass garage doors and the windows on 56, they're going to stay because they think they'll be badly soundproofed. Um, they talk about all the, the large amount of outdoor seating, um, no... Uh, no provisions for designated smoking area. Uh, and I guess the rest of the opposition seems to be chiefly making two points that uh, this was presented as a restaurant, but the menu is very sparse and is not the type of food you even need to sit at tables and chairs to eat. Uh, and that there's concern that once the restaurant hours end or, or the restaurant clientele ends, that it is just going to become an extension of Rise Bar with karaoke and uh, uh, lip syncing performers and all of the entertainment that goes on in the uh, existing Rise Bar space will uh, simply spread uh, to the double space. Uh, I think there's another one in the Q and A that you missed from Patrick. I haven't gone to the Q and A yet. Okay. Yeah. So Patrick uh, Tretanaro says the same thing about the letter. The letter from the Parkman Dome is the opinion of the Board of Managers. I'm a resident, and I disagree completely with the board. No one on the board spoke to me or any of my neighbors. Many residents of the building are in complete support of the expansion. Uh, 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 someone else says Rise has been very compliant during COVID and as long as they soundproof the new space, I don't see a negative consequence to the community. I only see our community filled with jobs and not empty storefronts. Uh, I think that is everything now. Okay, Bert, back to you or Ted. Ted. Hey guys, um, first off, I wanted just to touch base. Uh, just keep in mind when I went to the 50, 51st Street Block Association, um, they asked us to hold off this meeting so we can get opinions and to discuss a lot of these issues with sound or noise. And to be quite frank, when we went there, there was about 30 people in attendance. There were 17 people that spoke in favor of the bar, and I'd have to say that they were not all. Have to say that they were not all. They are not all tenants. Are the not all customers from Rise? Uh, there's only two people that spoke against us. One was Anita, who lives on 56th Street, which she never brought up her issues to the 55th Street Block Association. Um, and one guy just made a blanket statement. So there wasn't really an opportunity to address these issues. Uh, Anita asked our security guard. Um, how we intend to control this, the uh, street and the noise and the customers. And we've been doing it well. And he says, we're going to continue to have a good relationship with them. And if there's any issues, we can, you know, give you our number. And I asked point blank, Anita, do you have any issues personally with sound or with our customers or line? And she said, no. The problem that she had is when she looked down, she saw too many people going to the subway at night, which 
I said, well, if you think it's our customers, you can text us and we can try to divert people to go to another neighborhood just to keep another route to the subway, but just keep us informed. Um, I want to just remind the board that we've had five noise complaints in five years. Only one has been verified by the police. As my general manager spoke earlier, she's been in contact, constant contact with the police department. We had no issues. Um, you know, someone mentioned earlier about they, you know, are concerned about all these different people moving in and running these businesses. Well, I'm a Hell's Kitchen resident. I lived here for 20 years. I live two blocks away and uh, from Rye. So if there's any situation that is occur, I am here. I am a resident of Hell's Kitchen. Um, you know, he mentioned like we need to open up bike shops and shoe stores and all that. Well, ironically enough, that's what we have on our block. Right next door to Rise is a shoe stop. There's a bike shop across the lane and there's a hardware store right across the street. So we do have that diversity on our block. Um, let's see. The soundproofing that we did at Rise, I wanted to bring that up because we originally did a drop ceiling at Rise. And we had to go back, back later and fix some of the sound because when they ripped up the floor in the apartments above, they didn't insulate the, the flooring or the ceiling above. So this time when we do the soundproofing for Haru's side, we are gonna put uh, soundproofing insulation, two sheet rocks, and then we are gonna do the soundproof ceiling that's floating underneath. So there's an extra layer of soundproofing that we didn't have at the original rise. Um, and so we think that that is going to be better. The thing is about the additional space where people are like, oh my God, there's going to be more people in this and that. It's actually going to be a benefit. Um, on Friday and Saturday, typically just because of the nature of the business, we'll have a line between eight and 10 people between, uh, I would say about 12 o'clock and one o'clock in the morning. And having the additional space will probably ensure that we get the customers in rather than waiting in line out, out in the street. Um, and what we're asking for is people are afraid of all 4 a.m., 4 a.m., 4 a.m., the stigma. I ask you to look at our history of 311 and see how many complaints that we don't have. Um, you know, we're only asking for one additional hour on Thursdays from 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. And I'd like to tell you that we've never had one 311 complaint on a Thursday at all in our history of being open. And we're only asking for 4 a.m. on holiday weekends, which is on Sunday, holiday Sunday at 4 a.m. and Gay Pride, because, um, well, obviously it would be lucrative for us, but just in terms of functionality, can you imagine having all these tourism come into New York City, the bar is busy, and then at two o'clock you do a hard stop where everyone has to be out. They don't know that you close. And then guess what? Everyone's down the, walking down the street in a group going to the next bar at four o'clock that's open. If we're open the same time as our competitors during a holiday weekend, which we treat like the weekend or which we would treat like Saturday, it would allow our customers to slowly dissipate. And instead of just going to the next bar, they're gonna go home in smaller groups. So even though they're afraid of it, it's actually beneficial for crowd flow and the outdoor areas and the concern so I think it's a disservice for them to ask us to close at 2 a.m. on holiday weekends. Um, let me see. So Ted, Ted, I had a couple of questions. Um, mm -hmm. the, the two, the two uh, residents of the building who spoke, Sylvette and I think uh, Robert May, um, are you in contact with them about their issues? It sounds like you were talking with Sylvette. Um, well, I've never heard of the guy Robert before, um, to be honest. We've never gotten any complaints from him. I have not heard from him. I, I knocked on the doors to get the petition. He didn't answer the door. He didn't say ever anything to me. Um, when we had, I have a conversation and I have a good relationship with Savat. Uh, what happened is when we first opened up, we had some noise issues because they renovated, got the apartments above. I kept in contact with her. Um, there's very, very rare that she ever calls and has an issue. She, I asked her for a letter of support and she said that she is concerned that with additional space, there might be additional people outside. So she's not sure that she would write me a letter of support, but she's not gonna go against me because she knows that anytime there's an issue, we fix it right away. Okay. If there's a problem with people. And I would okay. also like to say with the expansion next door, it's not like we're not adding additional security to cover that side. 
So some of the problems that they're addressing, like, oh, people are going around the corner, Haru at the closed space and smoking. When we open up on weekends and we, if we have the later hours, we'll have security at that door as well. Okay. So we'll be actually covering the whole block. Right, thanks. Um, Ted, I take it those uh, floor plans for the outdoor space you sent us today or, the, or yesterday are the latest ones? Yeah, what happened was originally we had a lot of huge amount of extra outdoor seating. Uh, I had a meeting with Frank and Berg about it. We reduced some of it. Then I realized that I had too much seating in the street that I would probably have a difficult time monitoring just because of the way it's set up from the window. Um, and we limited it down. And then I decided to ask Christine for a meeting about it and ask her her opinion. Mm -hmm. And she came up with a very, very good and valid point about the school letting out and how that would be very congestive on the sidewalk. Um, so she suggested I make the four tops that we had two tops to give even more space is which something that I did change. And then even to go a little bit further, I had decided to not put out tables until after four o'clock when school is in session. So the students have a clear path to go to the subway at home and we would not put that, uh, okay. the seats out on the sidewalk, but we will use the street sidewalk. Uh, while school is in session, if they get out, just so we can keep the sidewalk clear because okay. it's beneficial for our staff, our customers, and hey. the students. Thanks, Ted. Donald, could you yeah. uh, let yeah, us can know? Can I just make one point, Frank? I'm sorry. Uh, although I see there's another reporter in the Q&A, Ariel Quinones uh, wrote something in support, if you could take a look at that. But I just want to make one point, if I may. Uh, well, actually, Ted, before you do, Donald, I just wanted to follow up on what Ted just said. Could yeah. you uh, make sure that the numbers on page two of the STIP form about the outdoor seating are up to date with the plans he sent yesterday? Yes, yeah, I think Jules made those changes and sent them, but I'll, we'll, we'll confirm that. Okay, thank you. We'll Go confirm ahead. And what I just wanted to say, and I, 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 I'm just gonna make one point because it's getting late and I appreciate all the time you're giving us, is something that Steve said, and Steve made a comment, he said, things are getting out of hand. I did not hear that tonight, and I have not heard that in the times that we've uh, come with respect to RISE. RISE was approved by the community board initially. When we went for the change to clarify the karaoke, because there was confusion when we said no live music is karaoke, live music, or recorded music. So we said, let's clarify that. We came back in 2016, it was approved. Uh, nothing is getting out of hand. I don't hear any complaints, specific complaints about problems outside, crowds, rowdy behavior. The only complaints that I've heard tonight are a few people that said that there's noise in their apartments. And you know maybe there's a disconnect because then we have a number of residents upstairs who say there's no noise. And like your comment with the other application, Frank, you know, how do you reconcile that? And what I was gonna say is uh, that perhaps Ted and your soundproofing in the high room space, if we identify the apartments, uh, and I think there were only about two or three of them where people said that they hear something, Maybe uh, you, you can contact those residents and see if you can go up there with your sound guy and maybe take some readings. Maybe there are some places you can plug something in to maybe sound is leaking into some apartments and not leaking into others. And so I think that's something that we can certainly endeavor to look into. But, you know, other than hearing a couple of, you know, a, a small number of complaints about some sound in the apartments, I don't hear anything about anything getting out of hand at all. Thanks, Donald. Couple, a couple. Yeah, thank you, things. Donald. A couple technical things. Um, in 2016, we had a stip that all live performances uh, would cease no later than 1 a.m. nightly. Are you okay with repeating that? Yes. Okay. Um, and uh, some things that came up today on page two, where you say 4 a.m. Sundays and Mondays are holidays. I think you said federal holidays, so we can add federal. And you let us know about the numbers. And then the storm enclosure came up what seems like a lifetime ago. Uh, was the conclusion that you're not having a storm enclosure? Um, are you mean for the Haru side? For uh, anything. And I'm not talking about the vestibules. I'm talking about the plastic things outside on, this, on the sidewalk, the vinyl things. Mm, I'm not sure what you're asking. I mean, we're using- He's asking, gonna... what, he's asking whether you are uh, removing the outside vestibule. Storm enclosure. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna remove, if we're, when, as soon as we get the new inside one on the Haru side, we're gonna take out the other one. 
Okay, so the answer is we have a storm enclosure should be no. Right. Okay. Okay, yes. so we're gonna, Donald will change that to. Yeah. Okay. Um, and and, uh, and uh, Frank, can we include a stipulation? Uh, what Donald was aiming toward in terms of like Robert, who had noise complaints in his apartment, that there'd be some kind of outreach and accommodation and testing of these apartments that specifically say they're having noise issues. Bert, I was going to get to that, but maybe ask for a little more. I think that's a very good idea. Could we get another, could you get your soundproofing guy to do another study of RISE? itself of the old rise and and make measurement into those two or three apartments and give you a recommendation of what needs to be done and then you know you do what has to be done i mean that that's it's not right for people to be this woman was nearly crying um we need we need to to find out to be um to be fair we did it out we did a reading in her decibel reading in her apartment and was way below legal limit. Well, let's do it again. I mean, there are two or three people which complain yeah. about that. I mean, the one tenant, you're definitely right because I never heard of him before, the one that talked about yeah. having a child and I, I we can definitely yes. do that. That was Robert, person, I think. And that um, person, we should follow up and resolve those issues one way or another. Mm -hmm. So Frank, could you come up with some wordage on that? Right. And I had another some question. language. Would you open to uh, replace the doors, you know, the garage doors, if there is complaints about that? Because everybody's, you know, the last time we had garage doors on Ninth Avenue, it was a disaster. And I think that we would want a commitment that if there are many complaints, you know, we, we you would consider uh, removing them. Yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 I let Ted answer. I, I think that's hard to do, um, you know, given some of the comments that were made tonight. I, I don't think we want to, I, I don't think Ted should put the fate of the frontage of, of his space facing Ninth Avenue in the hands of a couple of residents that have been determined for five years to shut down Rise Ball. Well, I'm not suggesting that. I'm suggesting a wild array of, of complaints. I mean. Well, I, I think that's very hard to define. And, and I, I understand what you're saying, Christine, but uh, you know, I think that's very hard to uh, put down in writing. So if in a community way board enforceable. members walk in front of the place and take measurement and take picture uh, and take recording and say it's out of, now we would say it's out of control, you know, yeah. different from where we are today. I mean, isn't it going, that going to be good enough to say you need to close it? I mean, Or you want us, or what, you would prefer that we go to the SLA and say, you know, these people are out of control? No, I prefer that, that you do what, what you would normally do is speak to Ted and say, I think there's a problem here. And I think that Ted has proven over the years that if there's any operator in this community that's, that's devoted to it and responsive, it's Ted Arenas. And so, I, I don't think it necessarily has to be just those two options, Christine. I think it can be speaking to Ted, say we have a problem, and by every indication he's given over yeah, the past I mean, five years, know, it's something he would address. In that situation, we shouldn't have had the problem in the first place, right? So you know that I, I don't like when we put the burden on the residents or the community board to do, to do the, uh, you, you know, the bidding of, oh, you have a problem, oh, it needs to be fixed, oh, it needs to do that. I don't think this is our job. So um, I would like to know that this, people are concerned about that. And I think it's legitimate because again, the last time was a disaster. So you understand we're not coming from uh, nowhere. We're coming from a place where we have, we had an experience. Maybe we can come up, oh, I'm muted, right? Okay, um, can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we can come up with yeah. a that if there is any issues instead of just replacing the storefront that we just leave the doors closed and, and no because that means the door should have been closed in the first place what well, i'm saying I, is that i'm concerned that the door the door of those garage door are not i sound proofed mm -hmm. in any way so well, you may be you may be the best operator in the world and there are still a lot of things leaking mm -hmm. so I'm just raising that issue because it's a real issue and it's, it's, 
it's not something that is under your control. Yeah. Just to give you some reassurance, we did have the sound um, guy do the tests in the building above, and he did. We did stand in front when the sound tests, and we didn't hear anything. Also, I'm considering putting the. Um, I don't remember the name of the soundproof curtain that I got for in front of Rise uh, and using that in front of the garage door to help uh, mitigate some of the sound at night. Um, you know, another thing to keep in mind is that we're not going to have these do windows or doors open that late. You know, you got to think about it in the summer, in the winter time, it's going to be closed all the time. If it's too hot. But again, you're missing my point. My, my point is that those, you're going to insulate everything, but the garage doors are not insulated mm -hmm. by, def by definition. Mm -hmm. So you have a leak there and I'm wondering, you know, if nobody's bothered, that's fine. But then if, if it becomes a problem, we need to make sure, be comfortable that, you know, something is going to happen. Well, if there is a problem, can we address it and not make a problem before there is one? Uh, maybe we can say, hey, you know, if there's a problem, we can- You'll do insulation. This. You'll do a, some for, form mm -hmm. of insulation so the problem is addressed. I think he's already saying he's going to do that with this, yeah. this, or thinking of it with this curtain. Yeah, so let's put it in. Okay. So how about, if, how about if we just have a stip that says, you know, if there's problems with noise leaking yeah. through the French door, yeah. the applicant will take reasonable steps to, yeah. you know, sound. Yeah. I think that's fair. Subjunctive. You okay. You're okay, Christine? If it were to yeah. happen. Yeah. And then finally, I just want to say, I, I don't think we should change the hours at all. I think uh, it's not necessary at this time. So that's my view. They're only asking for that one change on uh, Thursday night. No, they're also asking putting the holidays putting the holidays aside. But one change Haru, on Thursday yeah, night. Haru, just to clarify, Haru was closing at midnight. So from what we have we are doing right now is on the Haru side, expanding from midnight to two o'clock or three o'clock, and then putting one day more. I don't think we should change that at this point. But it's only one a, hour. Huh? It's only one hour though. Yeah, but it's, it's no, it's four hours on the Haru side and it's one but hour. But it's one operation, Christine. It's one operation. There is no Haru though. anymore. Know, There's no, no separate Haru. place there. The reality, the reality for the uh, neighbors is that it's four hours later on one side and one hour later on the other side. So anyway, that's my opinion. Okay, thank you. Uh, Frank, are we ready for you to summarize? There's a lot to summarize yeah. in terms actually, of stipulations. Actually, there isn't that much. Um, <laughs> really? I hope I didn't miss a lot. Uh, so these would be the- we've had, uh, we've had over an hour of discussion. Yeah, um, but not much, you know. So Donald, in addition to those technical changes I just discussed with Donald, the additional steps are Applicant will not seek a certificate of occupancy for more than 199 people. This application does not extend to any DCA approved sidewalk cafe. Applicant will have a licensed acoustician investigate noise issues, apartments and building housing applicant and incorporate acoustician's recommendations. And if there are problems with sound leakage through French doors or, French doors or windows, Applicant will take steps to mitigate said sound leakage. All the other old stipulations remain. Yes, and the uh, the other stipulation about all live performance, uh, including without limit, karaoke, live singing, lip syncing, will cease no later than 1 a.m. nightly. Okay. You're okay with all those? Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, do we hear a motion here? We have a motion. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Do, okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? Present not eligible. 
Someone else will have to tally because I'm at a disadvantage. I don't have I, visual. I couldn't. How many yes? I counted three no's. I don't know how many yes votes there were. Ellie, do you know? I'm um, still writing names down. Give me one second. Where's Mike? Okay. You, oh, we don't know what Mike voted. I thought I heard him. Mike, how did you vote? Mike Noble? Is he still here? He's on mute. He's on mute. Now, Nellie, did you hear how Mike voted? No, I did not. Okay. I have five yes, three no's. Okay. And then we don't know about Mike? I don't know. I did not hear Mike. So there are only nine people. We'll get to one. Can I ask one more thing? Um, if I was to drop the 3 a.m. close to leave it at 2 o'clock, would any of the no's consider saying yes? Yes. OK, so why don't, why um, don't... <laughs> Mike, was that you? Yeah, yes, yes, sorry. How did you yeah, vote? How did you vote? Hi. OK. Mike, say yes. Okay, and then in answer to Christine's question, I mean, in answer to Ted's proposal? Then we'd vote yes. Okay. Uh, Twee, are you, still, are you still voting no if they drop the 3 a.m. On, on Thursday? Well, I wanted to drop the 3 a.m. just to regular time and just keep the holiday Sundays, which is like 8. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. and yeah. Pride. But Tui, we didn't hear your your uh, answer. Uh, I'm still a no. Okay. okay. So you go from three to one nose. So it's eight to one. If, if you go it to the two a.m. Yeah, that's good. Two a.m. on Thursday, then. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank cool. you. Thank you all. Now we're moving on to the new liquor, wine, beer, and cider license. Oh, God. Um, number okay. Bird, wait a second. I'm confused by the vote. I think there are more than nine committee members here. One, two. I don't have a visual, so you can count. Counting. One, two, three, four, five. There are three on the phone. Oh, sorry. I missed, I didn't count Brian or Sabrina. Okay. Sorry. So Brian, what is it? Brian? I'm in favor. Sabrina? As well. Okay. So that's actually 10 11. to 11. Okay. 10 to 1. Thanks for being alert, Frank. <laughs> and counting. Cheap. <laughs> okay. Oh. Item number five on our agenda, 515 West 18th Street. Um, they are returning. We saw them last month. Um, yeah. So Kobe should be. And if, uh, you all if you all remember, there was a discussion at the full board. And so we came back here. Yeah, Kobe, you with us? If you're there, you have to unmute. Oh, okay. here, guys. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so <clears throat> let, let me just. Uh, tell you what happened from our perspective and Kobe can add whatever he feels he needs to. So the, the, the uh, you voted to approve this last time. Uh, there was an issue on the sidewalk seating because we weren't sure if we had the eight foot clearance. Kobe said he'd have to measure it and that it would be close and talking about inches. So um, uh, you did vote to approve it, I think under the assumption that we would be uh, at eight feet or, or more. After the committee meeting, we did the measurement and we were short about uh, six inches. Uh, I had a conversation with Frank and um, even though we were within DCA guidelines, we agreed at your request to remove uh, two tables, one next to each of the trees that was within eight feet. Uh, eight feet. 
Um, Frank and I had a dialogue. It may have been miscommunication on my end because when Frank was saying there were two, uh, I said, yes, that's why we were moving two tables. But I think Frank may have had something else in mind because there were two trees. In any event, went before the full board. And I think that there was a sense that uh, the board wanted more than just one table. Perhaps it needed to be two tables by each of the trees. Kobe and, and I spoke with Frank subsequently, and um, as difficult as the decision was, it was because of how important each of these seats are, uh, given the state of affairs, Kobe did agree to the request to remove a total of four tables, two by each uh, of the trees, and uh, the way to deal with that was determined to be to send it back to the committee for that purpose. So we're effectively agreeing to what the uh, committee or full board had requested. Thank Christine, you. Are you okay with that? Thank you. We appreciate so, that. Christine, you're okay with that? Yes, and we do appreciate that very much, Kobe. Hey, Donald, can you send us um, by the 22nd uh, revised plans? I think you should have that. I'll check, but I think uh, Emily sent that yeah. on to the. I, I had my architect redo it for sure, so it should, you guys should have it. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm pretty sure it went over, but I'll check. All right, well, Nelly will reach out if she doesn't have it. That's fine. Yeah. We can get that to you if you don't have it. We do right appreciate to very much your flexibility. Application when you all are done. Sorry, Rob. I When you all are done, I, I just want to ask one or two questions about this. That's all. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, there are 52 tables, and you have a uh, 100 seats. And they're deuces, so technically it should be um, 106. I've noticed that you've taken off four tables, uh, one at the north side of the property closest to the building. Uh, those four tables, um, you've removed uh, ones on the north side, right where the property line is. And then also uh, you took two tables off at the deuce, uh, the two deuces, uh, the tops, uh, right where the uh, northern entrance is of the sidewalk. Um, I'm just I'm like going through the math and stuff. It, realistically, instead of listing 100, just list um, 106. <laughs> I, I've noticed you added two tables on uh, a seat on each end table to where there's no real reason for anyone to get around anyway. So I was just going to say change the numbers from 100 to 106 because realistically chairs are going to be put there anyway. So I don't understand what you're talking about. Um, if you go to, uh, in their documents, uh, go to document 11 of uh, 24, and you take a look at the sidewalk, and you show a picture of uh, all the seats. Yeah. Okay. If you notice, on the very north, uh, the, the four tables uh, of the property line, if, if, if uh, to the right is 10th Avenue, and to the north would be, uh, I guess, uh, 23rd, hypothetically. Um, they took off uh, all four seats on the top. And then if you take a look uh, where the entrance is coming off from the sidewalk, um, right where uh, 10th Avenue is, they also took off uh, two tables with the juices there. So they removed six seats, but they added an additional seat at the end of each side of a four top to make it one a three top and one a five top. I'm just saying realistically, their chairs are going to go in there anyway. Let's just make the count 106 instead of it being 100. So could we, and, and, can, when your architect redraws that stuff, let's make sure that the number of uh, table and chairs are proper. Right. Yeah. That, yeah. That, that they're reflective. Yeah, you are, I you mean, are, I, I, I tried to squeeze it, it in. We got it. We got it. So your, the architect is changing yeah. the, the, the drawing. So let's make sure we have the right number of chairs and tables. It seems that there is a disconnect there. Yeah. Personally, I would have had them just remove an entire row. It's just um, one, but two, three, four, five already, tables. Yeah. But never mind. All good. Never mind. You're right. All right, so do we have a motion to... Uh, yes. Sorry, you don't agree with my opinion. Yeah. Sorry, no, what? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion. I agree with you, but this is not feasible. So, yes, I make a motion. Is there a second? Motion is to recommend approval now to the full board with the, the four tables around the two trees removed. Correct? Yeah. Okay. And All those four, in favor? There are four. Aye. 
Yeah. All right. Sorry, Christine. No, that's it. That's good. Okay. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Abstaining, present not eligible. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank, Thank you, you all. Again. Have a good night. Good night. Right. Yep. Thanks, guys. You Thanks as well. Back. Okay, right. number six. Yeah, I was an I, okay, I, I was an I too. I, I'm just too far away yep. from the microphone, but I'm back now. Yep, yep, yep. Mike's an I. Mike's a yes. Okay. All right. Let me um, uh, try to set the scene first. Go ahead. 623 9th Avenue briefly. I'm a, I was a yes too. I don't know if you counted me. I had battery issues. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So fix my battery. Power. Okay, okay. Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's stay focused. We should be able to wrap this up in like 20 minutes. Um, okay. Uh, this is the, the, the La Pulperia place at the corner of uh, 9th Avenue and 44th Street. Uh, when they came with their initial application, you recall that there's a main entrance on 9th Avenue and then a small, what used to be a sort of takeout pizza place on 44th Street that has its own entrance. Uh, and one of the community's chief concerns when they came was how that s s little small space was going to be used. Uh, and the applicant agreed that it was going to be principally used for takeout and that it wasn't going to be a separate branded establishment. Um, they then put up signs giving that side establishment a, a, a separate name. Uh, and also on social media had an Instagram account. Um, and I think a Facebook page. Uh, again, using this separate name for that space, calling it Mr. Bar Roz. Uh, at about the same time, this was in December, we got community reports that they saw lines of people waiting to enter on 44th Street and that the, the windows of the main establishment were all papered over, but people heard uh, customers in there. And with the paper, no one could see what was going on or how many, uh, how many people were inside. Uh, this led this committee and then the full board to write a letter to the SLA in late December saying we weren't changing our recommendation of approval, but laying out these facts and reports to the SLA and asking them to um, sort of carefully look at this application uh, and to make sure that it's gonna be operated as one establishment. Uh, th there was then the 500 foot rule hearing for this application and the ALJ chiefly relying on our December letter, determined that the liquor license would not be in the public interest. Uh, there's not a lot of reasoning. Uh, it sort of basically quotes uh, portions of our letter and our conclusion that, that we want, uh, uh, well, what they say is CB4's letter concludes that the reported behaviors at these premises makes them uneasy of what is going on in the establishment and request that the authority carefully evaluate the applicant's operations. Uh, based on that, uh, the ALJ concluded that uh, a liquor license would not be in the public interest. Uh, what happens next is this will go before the three SLA commissioners who make the ultimate determination. Um, they're not bound by the ALJ's finding, um, but presumably they take them uh, quite seriously. Um, Based on all this history, the applicant asked to come and speak to us uh, again today. Uh, so I'll turn it over to them. Yeah, I'm Michael Kelly representing the applicant. The uh, owners are here. Uh, our main problem was with the sign, which shouldn't have been put up. Oh, Mike, Mike, sort of, let, sorry, let me finish because uh, it'll help you out. Uh, when Mike got involved, um, things improved tremendously. Uh, we were making no progress on getting them to change the branding. Uh, Mike uh, got involved. Uh, they took down the brown paper the, the day I mentioned it, the day after I mentioned it to him. Um, they have been very cooperative since. They've sent us various renderings of new signage for the 44th Street space um, to make sure we're okay with it. They asked us if we had any specific requirements or concerns about outdoor dining. So they made sure 
so they could make sure they did it in a way we liked. Uh, so the relationship has improved. Um, and some of this occurred before the 500 foot ruling. So it's not all in reaction to that. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, uh, they did put the sign up with uh, Mr. Burroughs name, Burroughs, a play on his name. And they were using the side for just the em empanadas and brick oven food resembling the old traditions in Latin America. As you know, the sign has changed. We did have lines out a couple of nights. Uh, we did have uh, lines on December 5th, 6th and onward for job interviews. The owners also had family and friend nights where they were allowing 17 people inside. So there were other friends and family showing up a little earlier, which accounted for the lines. There's no lines anymore. And the applicants going to do their best to comply with everything they agreed to with the community board. And they do want to apologize for what happened. Um, I guess I'm probably the person who lives nearest this place. Um, and I know I and others um, you know, in the immediate neighborhood, uh, do not want to, you know, put an applicant out of business over this. Um, we also don't particularly want that space to be empty again. If people may re remember it was empty for about five years and became a major, uh, you know, uh, gathering point for drug dealing and other untoward behaviors. Um, so, um, you know, the, the neighborhood is concerned about that. I guess what I would tell the applicant though, is that as they've seen, um, this is a very active block association in block. And, um, you know, everything they do there is gonna be carefully observed. And um, community members are gonna report things to the SLA right away if there's any deviation from the stipulations and the method of operation and will you know use those complaints to you know oppose renewal of a license in two years if this uh if this becomes problematic in any way so i hope the, their recent uh behavior has been a sign of a a, a change of heart uh to to uh you know being being uh, more community spirited they fully understand that good but why did they do it in the first place? Uh, because <laughs> they couldn't operate La Poperia because of the type of restaurant it was with the type of food. So they were doing basically empanadas and brick oven food, which is not their regular fare. So that's why they opened up just a side street and used that different name. Because uh, Mr. Barros is basically famous for his name. It basically all had to do with that sign. Well, and the and the Instagram. Yes, they did put it up on Instagram and their website. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anybody else from the committee? Nellie, is anyone from the community want to speak about this? I have. Yeah, I have one hand raised, Christopher. Christopher? Christopher, you're on mute. Maybe he didn't want to speak. He may have had his hand up. He was the one who we called on twice last time. Maybe his hand has been up. For a long time. Okay. 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 Other than okay. that hand, there's no one else. Okay. Okay. Any more discussion about this? Are we, I assume what the applicant would like would be for us to write a letter to the SLA saying that, um, you know, we never changed our recommendation of approval, but, you know, we believe they have taken good faith steps to deal with the issues and therefore sort of affirm that we are recommending approval uh, as long as they adhere strictly to all the stipulations. 
But so do we need I mean, a vote on that? Okay, wait a second, Christine. Uh, yeah, are they going to operate under what name now? La Popery only. Okay, but if he yeah, likes his own name so much, why isn't he changing the name of the whole thing? Uh, La Popery <laughs> is a brand. It's had a few restaurants in the city that are very popular that went out of business. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Bert, okay, I, my question then, Frank, do we need a, um, uh, a vote? I believe we do because we're going to have to write a letter to the, uh, the SOA okay. sort of along the line, if, if this is what we want to do along the lines I discussed. Okay, does anyone want to make a, a... Go ahead, Christine, what were you saying? I, just, I was saying this is as Frank, as Frank is really um, in the lead here. So do you want to make a... a a motion yes. that we write a letter as Frank is describing it. Yes. Is there a second? Second. 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 Okay. Lots of seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Those opposed? Abstaining? Present not eligible. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I think it passes. Thank you for coming back, okay. gentlemen. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Uh, number eight on our agenda. Seven, as you know, is withdrawn. Eight is uh, 62 Chelsea Piers. Uh, is the applicant here? Yes. Hi. I'm the. I'm Harry Callie, and I'm the general counsel of Bluestone Lane. Okay, um, just to, to summarize, so, so again, we can move this quickly. Um, this place has been li previously licensed twice. I visited it when it was witchcraft and they were seeking to use outdoor seating. Um, Bert and I did another virtual visit with this to look at the outdoor seating, uh, but it is basically continuing uh, the same operation uh, sort of with respect to hours and outdoor seating uh, that have been in effect in the two prior businesses here. Any questions, comments from the committee? Anybody in the public, Nelly? No, no one. I make a motion. Second. Is there a, okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, opposed, abstaining, present, not eligible. You are thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you for, uh, thank you for sticking with us for your two minutes. And, <laughs> <laughs> uh, now we have item number nine, yes, 641 10th Avenue, Pelicana. Hi. Is there anybody here from Pelicana? Yes, uh, my name is Jay Yu. I'm a representative. And also Mr. Lim, who's the president, is also there. Okay. Do you want to say anything? Okay, um, yes. <clears throat> uh, we are actually transfer, uh, transferring on-premises liquor license. It was a previously licensed. And um, the restaurant is a Korean chicken restaurant. And operating hours are 12 p.m. to 2 a.m., seven days a week, uh, with uh, eight tables, with uh, 20 sittings. Uh, okay. We have a, one customer bar, but we don't have any sittings right now. And uh, the size of the premises is about 1,100 square feet with, uh, and the basement. And there's no okay. outdoor sittings. Okay. okay. All right. So we had one letter of opposition from Kathleen Tree. We said this is a chicken joint. They don't need a full liquor license to please its clientele. Uh, we don't want to serve liquor served in every single space. Please deny it. Um, but again, this had been previously licensed. One big difference, though, is that the previous uh, license uh, was closing at 1030, and this applicant is uh, seeking to be open until two. 
Um, I've not, we've not heard anything, anything yet from the community about any opposition to that, but that is one big change here. I take it you, you were intentionally, to the applicant, you were intentionally changing the closing hours, correct? Um, because of the COVID and then it's very difficult to survive as far as the business wise. And then that's why increase the hours, but that technically we cannot open till 2 a.m. right now. Well, but well right, that's what doesn't make any sense because in COVID, right. so these but hours have one, nothing to do with COVID. They're, they're for post COVID. Right, this one is, I mean, uh, we're proposing it um, after the COVID-19 uh, the emergency situations. Um, right. And also um, I, we spoke to the different uh, block associations, and then she, she is the one who actually mentioned about 2 a.m., and they, they are not going to op, uh, you know, oppose the, the liquor licenses if we open till 2 a.m. Okay. Okay. That's fine. All right. Is, do I hear him? Uh, wait, wait a second. Anybody Nellie, wanted anyone, to come in? Nellie, anyone yeah. from the community? No, no one. Okay. Okay, and nobody from the committee has any comments other than anyone want to making a, a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Present not eligible? Abstaining. Okay. And again, Thank you very much. I'll, I'll echo what Frank had said for number eight. Thank you for hanging out and waiting. You're welcome. Thank you for your service. You've seen the board in full operation, the BLP. Okay. okay. Number right, good 10. Night. Good night and good luck. Number 10, the last applicant on our um, agenda, 373 West 46th Street, Cantina 46 Corporation. Um <laughs> Good evening, John Springer for the applicant. The applicant, John Sideris, I believe, is on the on the call as well. How's it going, everyone? Hi. Good evening. Thanks, Thanks for, for hanging in and waiting with the way. Yeah. I can just want to say speech. anything? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, this is uh, this place has been it's between eighth and ninth Avenue. It's been licensed continuously since the mid nineteen eighties when John's father ran it. And in 2009, until as recently as December, it was Betty Bar doing business as Hourglass uh, ta Tavern and Cafe. Uh, the DBA is staying the same. Um, we're seeking a full liquor license from, um, we indicated 4 p.m. during the week, uh, but we're thinking 3 p.m. because the matinees, this is a theater district. Uh, so it's 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. to 2 a.m. Uh, weekdays, 11 a.m. to 2 a.m. Saturdays and Sundays for brunch. So we get the brunch. Uh, it's 24 tables, uh, 48 seats. The, uh, there's a nine foot bar with no stools on the first floor. This is a th the dining room is split among three floors as it was before. On the, uh, so there's uh, seating on the first floor, second floor and third floor. On the second and third floor, there's small service bars but they're not stand up bars. There is no customer bars, it's not a bar. It's a restaurant, um, we, we submitted a menu that's got a combination of Mediterranean fare and, and, and some American fare. We're actually going to add some more entrees uh, to comply with the restaurant uh, standards, the liquor authority, which I need to talk to the, to the applicant about. He is one of the principals. He'll, he'll manage the premise himself with assistant managers of, with uh, requisite experience. Uh, he is one of the principals of the landlord LLC as well. Uh, no outside areas, no live music, no dancing, no DJs, no promoters, no security, no queues outside. Uh, the, pl the last place had an approved, unenclosed sidewalk cafe. At some point in the future, we may come back for that, but uh, we can't really do that now because they're not accepting applications and it's going to take too long. So we're going to go without it. Uh, the occupancy of the space is 46. It's had a valid CO since 2008. There's no residential units in the building. Um, there are three public bathrooms. The, uh, most of the licenses in this area are 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. There's a few that are 
for Chinese restaurants and whatnot that might be 1130, but most of them are uh, 2 and 4 a.m. It is a 500-foot uh, situation, and we're happy to answer any questions you have. So, John, John, a couple of things. If I remember right, this used to, it was all run by the same people, but upstairs was a small bar. Are they not keeping that distinction? It's going to be like sort of one restaurant through the whole, all the floors? That's right. It's one premise, one licensee, one operator, uh, a, st a stand up customer bar in the first floor where, uh, with no stools. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then two service bar, a service bar on each, basically for wait staff because they can't go up and down the stairs with the drinks. Yeah. Okay. The, uh, on page two of the STIP form, your numbers don't quite make sense because you have your C of O capacity at 42, but then you say you're going to have 48 seats. Well, the, yeah, I, I, it's a point well taken. We can remove those seats. Uh, actually, a CO capacity is on the number of people. It's not on the number of seats. Um, but we can, if the owner will agree to, we can, we can remove the extra six seats. From well, except the, except yeah. your, your staff also counts. In yeah, the, staff yeah. as well. I, I understand that. Uh, it's only a problem is, is if all the seats are filled. If, if, if we don't have... If there's 46 people, yes, I, we, we understand that. How uh, many staff are you going to have? John, how, what do you figure, six people maybe? There's usually uh, five people, um, three, three wait staff and, and uh, dish man and a chef. That's pretty much it. Well, you're gonna, then you're going to have over 50 people at a full house with a capacity of 42. It doesn't work. We're going to we're going to enforce the uh, CO. There's not going to be more than 42 people, regardless of how many seats, physical that, seats. That's are. correct. The, the third the third floor may, may never have anybody up there. Right. Um, the, the first floor is going to fill up. The second floor is going to fill up again. The CO. Uh -huh. Yeah, the but is it, is... isn't the presence of the seats just sort of a temptation to use them if you we will we will remove them. OK. And, we, and I will amend the page two. Okay, and could you send us a revised uh, floor plan showing you know where, where you're removing them? Of course. Okay, by uh, February 22, please. Absolutely. Um, and I see you're saying you're not you are not going to have a storm enclosure, correct? I didn't have one before, John. I don't. I don't believe you. Oh have no, one. it had one of the most <laughs> notorious ones in the neighborhood. It actually had a, It actually had a table and chair in it. It, it, no, the, tenant, the tenant previously had a storm enclosure. Uh, we, we prefer to have the storm enclosure for, for more than just the rain reasons. Because of uh, the night traffic, a lot of people take pleasure in peeing on the door uh, as a hiding spot. Um, it, it also serves as a, pur as, as a purpose to keep, keep the, 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 the frontage of the store, which is very small, kind of quiet. Uh, I mean, I'm very active in the neighborhood. Uh, I'll tell you there has been a lot of crime. Uh, I'd rather have two two things protecting the entrance as opposed to one. All right. Uh, well, John, the, the, the rule, the, the legal, the law says that the enclosure cannot be more than 18 inches. You're aware. In right. That, that's correct. And I'm aware of that. So what, then, what you need to do is cut it down to 18 inches. I, unfortunately, because of this this particular building, the way the the fire escape leads out, it needs it needs to have that extra two inches. It's it's the only way. To what that, extra that. two inches? So there's a fire escape that's in front of the building. Right. That fire escape has a ladder. It needs to have two inches so the fire escape could drop down for the clearance. Right. For the clearance. Otherwise, there's just there's just physically no way at eight, at eighteen exact. You're, it's landing right onto the to the canopy. It's just uh, if you look at the shape of this property, it's not a tr it's not a square. It's a triangle. I call it the pizza. Um, it's it's you know we're making the impossible work for for quite some time. You know this 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 thing has been you know a 30, 30 years restaurant. It's not like it, you know we're not trying to recreate the wheel. I don't understand. I'm going to give me a second so I can look at it. What's sure. the address? Three seven three. Three seven three West Forty Sixth okay. Street. So let me see the plan. What are you? What are you saying? It's all upside down. Are you saying the storm enclosure extends two inches beyond what is legally acceptable? No. That 
That's correct. It ha and it, and it, and it ha and it and it just just the top part. The actual doors themselves are actually much more in. The reason why not, if you guys just, just two, two inches, uh, that's it. That's all, just so, just so there could be a latch on top of the, the the canopy. So so if you if you see the picture, if you Google Earth the restaurant frontage, you'll see there's a fire escape that runs straight down. That ladder needs to be able to drop down. As per the fire and department, I, and it's it's. You know, we're not, again, we're not reinventing the wheel. It's been like that, you know, over 25 years. We're keeping the same exact design. So I don't understand. I don't see yeah. anything. Yeah, that does the ladder drop? How does the ladder inter interact with the yes. storm enclosure? So when the storm enclosure is there, it's yeah. unable, the ladder is unable in the event of a fire for someone to drop the ladder all the way and have clearance. Okay. With the space of the two inches the ladder is able to fall all the way without being encumbered by the. Uh, but the ladder, is, but the ladder is on the right side or the left side. If, if you're looking at the space, it's on your left side. Yes, on the left side. So I'm oh, not talking about door. that. I'm talking about the depth of yeah. the the enclosure. The depth. It can so only. The depth of the enclosure is right now at three or four feet. We're talking about bringing it back 18, 18 inches. Bringing back the enclosure 18 inches. It, the storm there. enclosure can only extend 18 inches from the front of your building. I, I understand. I understand that part. Uh, what I'm trying to explain is that the way this was set up, and it's been grandfathered way before, this is it, it needs to have clearance for the fire escape. Fire escapes are typically longer than 24 inches. It is, it's just the way it's been for years. Go ahead. I don't follow you at all. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 could, I, could, I could kindly draw this out and I'm willing to even give you a walkthrough of what this place looks like. But the, the simplest solution is if you just Google Earth the address and look at the frontage of the store, you'll see that there's a fire escape in front of the actual property. It overhangs from where the door would be. So that's why it has to, the 18 inches is encumbered by the fire escape. Well, right. So why does making the storm enclosure bigger allow the fire escape to work? Yeah. Because the ladder is right at, at it's right at 18. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, if, if you're right there, if, 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 the, if we'll have, we'll yeah, have it, the architects check, take a look at it. Oh, okay. so you mean otherwise this, the ladder would cut through the storm enclosure? Yeah, correct. It, it, it would, it, it would fall right on it. And then there's no, I wouldn't be able what to. What about if it's three feet deep? It does fall on it anyway. It does not. It, it gives it enough clearance. It, it gives that it enough. Doesn't make any sense. It breaks through it. Yes. There, there, yes, it's removable and it breaks through it. There's, there, it, it there, it's cut out with Velcro where it's removable and you go right through into the enclosure I in case see. of a storm. Otherwise, it would hit the frame of. Oh, correct. Yes. Right. That, that, that's what if I'm trying to tell. If you look at the picture, you see it right away. Right. Yeah. So what you have to do is remove it. Re remove the, st the storm enclosure? Yes. Uh, and, okay. Uh, because right. it's, it's like, it, look, it's not ADA compliant. It's not for wheelchair. If a wheelchair comes back and, and look at it, they can sue you for the, for the because it's not compliant. Be being ADA compliant, I I've been on the ADA compliant board for, for so. New York State. Give me a second. I got to speak to this. All right. I I've had several, several experiences with new ADA compliancy. This, this particular place has been grandfathered in. The entrance to the door is a 30 inch. It's not a 36. We are not ADA compliant by, by far. Uh, again, this is a grandfathered in property. It's from the 80s. Uh, it has nothing to do with the, 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 the actual canopy being ADA compliant by, by no means. Okay, well, my information from the mayor's office is uh, different from yours, but I would recommend that you remove it. It would be better for your fire compliance and it would be better for everything. So have no, 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 no canopy, is that what, you're, is that, is that what I'm right. saying? Hearing no canopy whatsoever? Yes. It's not a canopy, it's a vestibule, right? It's, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a vestibule. That's, you yes. can say that. Yes, yes. correct. It is a so we are saying no vestibule. If you want to put a canopy, you can. That protects from everything. Can I, can I ask a question? <laughs> Looking at the picture, it looks just like a canopy to me. That's, that, that's what it is. I, I thought that's what you guys are asking me. The canopy is. It's a canopy on top. Yeah, it's not a storm enclosure. Oh. 
A storm enclosure oh, right. is one of the boy. You know what it is. Yeah. Frank, the is there a storm enclosure? No, it's so not. No. It's a, it's a, it's a canopy. Okay. So, so John, what what we are asking about are those, you know, so the way. Those, let, let, let me okay. speak. Say it are again. Those, are those vinyl or cellophane booths that people put in front of their doors? We have to open a. Oh no no we don't have <laughs> no, no. All right. I'm All right. sorry. We, we, we disconnect. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I, again, I, we're, we're talking about canopy. I'm thinking yeah. something okay. else. Okay. All right. And then the, the last the last technical thing um, on the page that says outdoor <laughs> items other than sidewalk cafe, you didn't answer whether you're going to have it. I assume you the answer to that's no. The answer is no for now. Yes. Okay. We're, okay. we're going to come back later with a, a full, a full yeah. unclosed like they had before, and then we'll go through that whole process with you again. Okay. All right. I'm going to make the answer to that no. All right. That's all I got. Anybody from the public? Anybody, anybody uh, on the committee? Additional questions, comments? Okay. Nellie, do we have anybody from the community? No, no one. I'd like to make a motion. Second. Go ahead. And it's seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Present not eligible? I think this is the end of our meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for your Thank time. You. Appreciate Take it. Care. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Okay. Have a good one. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good Thanks night. for Thank hanging you. in there. Thank you, Nellie. Good work. Good work, everyone. Thank you. Nellie? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.